At the beginning of each high school football season, every high school team in Texas has one dream. That's to be playing the week before Christmas. And if you are, that means you have reached your ultimate goal. And that's to be playing for a state football championship. This afternoon at College Station, Kyle Field on the University of Texas A&M campus. Paris and West Orange Stark will play for that Class 4A state high school championship. The Paris Wildcats have overcome a lot of adversity to get here. They lost their first three football games of the year, all in the fourth quarter. Paris has since come back to win 12 straight. And that has put them here with big wins over Kilgore, Denison, and Cleburne in the state playoffs. For West Orange Stark, the Mustangs expected to be here. They are the defending Class 4A champions, have won it two years in a row, in fact, 1986 and 1987. That means the Wildcats have their work cut out for them. They face a bigger, and some might say more talented, West Orange Stark team. But don't tell that to Coach Allen Wilson and his Paris Wildcats. The Silver Crush has made its first appearance since 1980 when the Cats went to the state finals for the first time in school history and got back into the playoffs for the first time in over 30 years. Now the Paris Wildcats are hoping to take that Silver Crush and use it to their advantage this afternoon. The Crush is back. Ask Kilgore, ask Denison, ask Cleburne, ask Highland Park. And Paris Wildcat is hoping it's, our Paris Wildcat fans are hoping it's there one more time in 1988. If it is, the Cats go home with their first ever state class 4A football championship. Good afternoon again from Kyle Field on the campus of Texas A&M University in College Station and welcome to this class 4A state championship game between the Paris Wildcats and the Mustangs of West Orange Stark. I'm Tom Allen along with Randy Nation and Eddie Anderson. We hope you enjoy this afternoon's game. Only the second time in Paris's history that the Cats have made it to the state championship finals. The first time in 1980 when they lost 19-0 to Huntsville. For West Orange Stark, a chance to become a part of Texas high school football history. Only three teams in the history of Texas high school football have repeated three consecutive years as state champions in their class. Waco between 1925 and 1927. Amarillo between 34 and 36. The last to do it, Abilene High School between 1954 and 1956. The Mustangs are defending Class 4A champions from 86 and 87 after moving down from 5A in 85. They have only lost to one 4A school in their history since moving down to Class 4A. There are two losses this year on a 12 and 2 record coming to 5A schools out of the Beaumont area, both on field goals, both late in the game. And they thought they had a disappointing season during the regular season. Now here they are at the state championship game. As we mentioned, the Wildcats here for the first time since 1980, only the second time in the school's history. They had not been to any playoff game in over 30 years since 1980, and now between 80 and 88, Randy, Alan Wilson and Bill Hicks combined have brought the Wildcats to six postseason berths. Well, I, I think the key part of that is Alan Wilson. Bill Hicks started a progress uh, back in 1980, but Alan Wilson has, has developed this team over the last three or four years, Tom, to put them into contention where you look back at the last two years because uh, West Orange Stark, if you're looking at the graphics now, beat Rockwall. 17-7 to in 1987 finals. They beat McKinney 21-8 to the year before, and both of those two teams represented uh, teams that beat Paris out. Last year, it was Rockwall that won on the tie between McKinney, Rockwall, and Paris that went on to the state finals. The year before that, it was McKinney doing the same thing to Paris. So Paris comes back and more or less kind of making a little bit of revenge for North Texas teams this year. As uh, Dan Hook said in a newspaper article a little earlier in the week, North Texas teams perhaps not quite as wide open as West Orange Stark would play, but he admits that the last two years, Rockwall and McKinney have been tough football games. He expects nothing less this afternoon. I think one of the keys for Paris, Randy, is to keep the emotion under control. It has been eight years. The uh, fellas in the silver and white and blue on the field now were just little fellas when the, when the uh, Silver Crush first made the state playoffs and went to the state finals in 1980. Now it's 
that's their opportunity, and it's an opportunity for them to do something a Paris high school football team has never done, and that's take a state championship in football. I think tempering that emotion a little bit, playing within themselves, is one of the keys to victory today. Well, we talked about the last two weeks has been uh, a big defensive struggle, both against Denison and Cleburne. Actually, it did not turn out to be as much of a defensive matchup as we thought uh, prior to game time. This, I have a feeling, will be much more of a defensive matchup. Uh, two big defensive teams. Uh, again, West Orange Stark is used to having teams run straight up at them. Harris is going to go a little bit wider this year. Let's, let's take a look now at the starting lineups for both teams. First of all, for the Paris Wildcats, the offensive line, a line, Randy, that has really come together here, particularly in the five playoff games. You have Darren Lane at tight end, one of the favorite receivers for, uh, uh, quarter, for quarterback James Dillard. Then Boyd Milby, Cliff Brooks, James Warren, Judd Payne, Steve Moore, not the biggest guys in the world, but David Clapp has gotten them to work as a unit, and they play pretty good football. Let's talk about the receivers and backs now. James Dillard at quarterback, perhaps the key, because he's the trigger man, Randy, on the quick pitch. Darwin Ferguson will perhaps start at wing back today. Key battle and Marcus Henderson in the backfield. But with Paris, you rotate 11, 12 backs in and out. And it's hard to say who will be there at any one time. But we expect to see those people initially in this game today. No doubt about it. You know, how, uh, how big a... A factor was key battle last week. We didn't see him in the first three series of downs against Cleburne last week. The first series of downs he comes in, he springs Marcus Henderson on the outside, lets him track down the side, a good 30-yard pickup. Two plays later, Perry scores on the pass to Kenneth Ellis. Let's go, let's go down to the field for our national anthem and back with the defensive lineups after this. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red lineup now. First of all, for the Paris Wildcats, a defensive unit that will be pressured today. Michael Fuller and Key Battle, perhaps the keys, no pun intended, as you said last week at defensive end, Randy. Then Rodney Johnson, Richard Jones, who had an outstanding game last week at nose guard, and Darren Lane at right tackle. Defensively in the backfield for the Paris Wildcats. As we go to that, the linebackers, Roddy Wortham, Rodney Kendricks, very quick, good lateral pursuit. And in the defensive backfield, that uh, the corners, Darwin Ferguson, Michael Johnson, Hightower and Henderson at the safety, and Rover. This is the team they will have to stop for West Orange Stark on the offense and three tremendous uh, people in the backfield. If we can pull those up. There we go. Big offensive line, first of all, that will have the weight advantage on Paris. Perhaps not quickness, though. Earlton Rogers, Bishop, Brown at center, followed by McCorvey at the right guard, DeWall, and Jason uh, Uzi, the tight end. Let's go to the backfield where really the strength of this team is for West Orange Stark. Tremaine Lewis, a 191-pound senior quarterback. Terrence Brown and Jelmar Rhodes, great running backs. They are both 1,000-yard rushers. Julian Richard and watch flanker Eric West, perhaps the best receiver on the field for West Orange Stark, and he could be a game breaker. Harris has won the won the cost, uh, Tom, and they have elected to receive. They will be defending the East goal here in the first quarter. West Orange will be going from left to right on your football screen. The Wildcats and the West Orange Stark Mustangs coming up the Class 4A Texas High School State Football Championship from Kyle Field and College Station. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Tom Allen, Randy Nation, and Eddie Anderson, Kyle Field and College Station. The Class 4A State High School Championship game, Paris and West Orange Stark. 
Harris has won the toss, elected to receive. They'll move from right to left here in the first half of play across your television screen. The West Orange Stark Mustangs and the Wildcats remarkably similar in uniform. What you see on the West Orange Stark side is the Paris Road, uh, Paris home uniform. The Wildcats, the visitors today, and wearing those silver crest jerseys that Alan Wilson broke out for the Denison game after over eight years in hiatus. Last seen during the state championship game of 1980. We are just about to get this one underway. Hightower and Johnson deep for Paris. It's a high kick coming down at the 10-yard line and taken by Johnson to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, and Johnson spun down at the 28-yard line. Demarin Judge in on the tackle for West Orange Stark. And Paris will set up shop at their own 28, squarely between the hash marks. A bit of a breeze into their face, Randy, in the first half of play would not appear to be a real factor, except perhaps in the kicking game. Well, it looks like that uh, down on the field level, we're getting a little bit more breeze up here, but on the field level, it's fairly calm. A wing formation set strong to the right side as James Dillard calls them down. Now wing in motion across the backfield. Damn. And they will roll that way, and Dillard wants to throw right away, and he's going deep, has a man, that is Kenneth Ellis there, and he can't get to it. Nice defensive coverage for West Orange Stark. Jonathan Allen in the defensive secondary with the coverage on Ellis, who caught a pass like that for a big game last week. Well, Dillard comes out as we look at the replay, Tom, and uh, he goes right to the air first off. He gets a lot under this ball, but you see it spinning kind of uh, like a lame duck, so to speak. But he's got a lot of wind down on the field coming, quartering at him. So it's going to be a little bit hard to pass, especially downfield. Second down and 10. The Cats trying to loosen up the West Orange defense. The formation strong right, and they will sweep that way. This is Marcus Henderson a has a seam. 35-40, 45-50. First down, 45. Down at the 43-42 yard line. First and 10, Paris. Marcus Aber with the tackle for West Orange Dark saves the touchdown. But Marcus Cornbread Henderson rolls on down to the 42 on the favorite play by Paris. They go strong side. Find a seam, get a nice kick out. That looks like battle once again with the block. And Henderson all the way down to the 42-yard line at West Orange Stark territory. Set the wing strong left. Split backs in the wing tee behind Dillard. Double tight end set. The pitch, they'll cut back inside to the 40. Nice yardage, and I believe that's Gary Young on the carry. Young down inside the 40 and down to about the 38. But Tom, it looks like the Wildcats are just going to come out and dance with who brung you. You go the sweep in the right side. Marcus Henderson gets the big block from Key Battle. Then they come back around. They give it to Gary Young. He goes uh, off left tackle, cuts back inside, as we see on the replay, and picks up about, uh, oh, close to five yards. Call it actually second down and six. Wildcats with the ball at the 38-yard line. West Orange, Stark territory. They'll sweep weak side. This is battle. Inside, outside a yard. Down at the 37. Going away from the strength of the formation, the wing. And brought down quickly, Jimmy Knox up from the secondary. And coming over on a nice lateral move is Chris Orr. Good job by the defensive ends that time for the Mustangs. They shut the pursuit off to the outside. Made key battle run back inside where they get a little bit of help from the inside men. Third and five for Paris at the West Orange Stark 37-yard line. Wildcats with the opening drive off the kickoff. Need a big play here. And they go weak side on the sweep. That is Henderson. No running room and drop for a loss at the 41. Big defensive play and coming up quickly was Bruce Avon from the defensive secondary. Fred Johnson makes his tackle, but Avon shut it off on the outside. And a loss back to the 41-yard line will bring up fourth and nine. Well, that time, Fred Johnson made the deep pursuit right there. Had a good good lead block, but Johnson beat the block and was able to make Henderson go five yards deep into the backfield. Then the corners come up, shut it off, and what uh, looked like a good sustaining drive for the Wildcats is stalled out at the 40-yard line and puts them in a punting situation. Gary Young will punt, standing back at his own 42-yard line. 43-yard line now, and no deep safety for West Orange Stark. Snap is back. Young fields it on a bounce. No pressure. Nice kick. This one comes down inside the 20, takes a Paris bounce, bounces out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. So 
So for the first time this afternoon, the Silver Crush defense on the field, Randy, and they have to contend with Lewis, Brown, Rhodes, and Eric West, perhaps four of the fastest players Paris has seen all year. Uh, I would say that they probably are the four fastest, and you can't say that anyone is the key player, but if I was going to pick one, it would be Lewis, because Lewis controls that pitch offense, and that is what uh, Paris is going to have a hard time with today. Lewis controls where he wants to run the dive or run the option outside. Split backs behind Tremaine Lewis, the quarterback. With a momentary stoppage of play, and now we're ready to get underway. The Mustangs' first offensive possession of the afternoon. 9.18 to go in the first quarter, no score. Motion in the backfield. Lewis, a long count, has the ball. The dive to the fullback, and he is stopped after a gain of one. Richard Jones from that nose guard position beats this block inside, gets a hand on him and only a pickup of one yard on the carry. Jelmar Rhodes on the carry, second down and nine for West Orange Stark. Stark probably will come out, Tom, and do basically what the Wildcats did, try to establish some running game early and uh, just try to pick where the holes are and see what's going to be available or what's given to them by the Wildcat defense. Send West wide to the left side. Once again, split backs behind Tremaine Lewis. And Lewis will throw. Looks for a receiver. Has a man and throws it over the wrong shoulder. West turned to the outside. Lewis threw to the inside, and there was nobody home. Well, credit Michael Johnson that time because Johnson stayed on the inside of West. West had only one place to go, and that was to the sideline. Johnson cuts him off as we look on the replay. Johnson's got the position inside. The only place that West had to go was outside. He was supposed to do, apparently, from the way it looks, do about a 10 out and up. That's where the ball was thrown, but Johnson cuts him off, doesn't let him complete the pattern. It is third and long for West Orange Stark. Third and nine from the Mustang 16. And Lewis fakes, wants to throw. Pressure is on, has a man there, caught at the 20 and gets away at the 25. He's got the first down at the 30 and down at the 31 yard line. Oh, if we get to see a replay of this, he moved before anybody else started. The big right tight end, Eric West, he moved from the line of scrimmage just prior to the snap and got by with it, and uh, tough luck for the Wildcats and a good break for West Orange as they pick up first down yardage out to the 31. They had him stop, though, at the 20, Randy, and let him get away. Michael Johnson had one hand on him but couldn't get, bring him down short of the first down yardage. First and 10 for West Orange Stark on the pass completion from Tremaine Lewis to West. Mustangs now getting into better field position. Four down front for Paris. Here's the pitch back. And stopped at the 34-yard line is Terrence Brown. Brown, a gain of perhaps three, as Paris slides quickly over there to stop the outside run. Harrison and Steve Walker out to the side quickly, but even though they were there quickly, Tom, Brown still picks up as we watch on the replay, gets around the corner so fast he was able to pick up four yards, and it was still a good defensive play for the Wildcats. Let's call it second down and a long seven now for or a long six, rather, perhaps short seven for West Orange Stark. The ball just outside the Mustangs' 34-yard line. 7.04 to go in the first quarter and no score. Paris now with a five-man front. Lewis wants to throw, has a man over the middle, caught, and down at the Paris 49-yard line. And that looked like Julian Richard, number 29. It was Richard. He just uh, drives against Darwin Ferguson, then tails off a good pass thrown by Lewis that time, cutting from the inside as we look at it on the replay. Julian Richards, Richards on the right side comes across. Ferguson was there, but just a little bit shy of it. And uh, first time for the Mustangs of West Orange to be in Paris territory. And Lewis with a quick drop and a quick release to get that pass off. No real pressure so far on Lewis by the Paris defense. Now a four-man line. And Lewis, here's the pitch. Outside is Brown to the 50 and stays on his feet for a yard down to the 48. Stephen Walker along with Michael Johnson and Kendricks coming up to make the play. And that time they strung it out long enough, Tom, so he didn't have that turn to get around the corner quick enough to pick up very much yardage. Uh, actually about one yard on the pickup. We've mentioned before, three years ago, West Orange Stark dropped down from 5A, a consolidated school district of West Orange and Stark High Schools, and they have been a 4A power ever since. Split backs behind Lewis. Wide receivers left and right. Second down and nine for the Mustangs. Lewis, straight back to pass on the throw it up and catch it uh, maneuver and it's overthrown at the Paris 20 yard line and once again they're go going for uh, Julian Richard 
incomplete. It'll bring up third and nine, and uh, that looked very familiar. Paris did that against Cleburne last week. A real mortar shot, and you just tell your receiver to run under. Well, that's basically uh, what they did with Ellis on the uh, on the first play from the line of scrimmage offensively for the Wildcats. The only difference is, is Tremaine Lewis had a uh, nice breeze behind him, whereas James Dillard had it right at his face. Also, the ball was out of bounds anyway. Third down and nine for West Orange Stark at the Paris 49, and Lewis will throw again. Good protection, throws it underneath, caught and dropped short, very short of the first down. Great coverage the Paris by 47. Stephen Walker was right there with him, step for step out of the backfield, and that is what they're going to have to do, Tom. They were real effective against Cleburne with that swing pass out of the backfield as we look at it on the replay monitor. And Stephen Walker was right there with him, making him the hit on Eric West. Uh, he didn't catch the ball, but he, well, actually, I, did say, I guess he did catch he the ball because it moves up. The ball came out on the bounce, but West Orange goes to punt anyhow. Fourth down for West Orange Stark. As we switch field position, it would appear. The punt is up, a little pressure, but this is a good punt. Inside the 10, taken there. At the 10, 15, looking for a seam to the 20, and out to the 23-yard line. Michael Hightower. Michael Hightower on the carry. And the Cats set up for their second possession of the first quarter with 5.04 to play. First and 10 at their own 22. Well, what butterflies were there, Tom, are probably uh, disintegrating now because Paris has had one chance at offense and defense, as has the Mustangs, one chance at offense and defense. So now you'll come out and see what kind of offensive schemes you could put together. And don't forget, Paris is going against the wind this way. First and 10 Cats from their own 22, wing right. And Dillard will go that way inside to Gary Young, still on his feet. 25, stutter steps to the 30-yard line. Nice run by Gary Young when it looked like he might be dropped after just a yard. He's out to the 30-yard line, and it'll be second down at about two for Paris. That was good uh, second effort by Young that time. He had a good wall of blockers coming around the outside. The guards were pulling. Dillard was there along with Key Battle. But he just kind of hung in behind his guards instead of going around them, waited for some holes to open up, and picked up about eight on the carry. Ball on the far side, hash mark, second and two for Paris from their own 30-yard line. Balanced offensive set. Dillard hands off up the middle. No running room that time. Marcus yeah. Henderson. That looked like Marcus Henderson. I was getting ready to say maybe somebody else, but Henderson was the man there, and Rick Deering makes the initial hit. A gain of maybe a half yard. Let's call it third down and an awful long one for Paris from their own 30-yard line. Yeah, this is not where you want to be punting the ball from if you're Paris because besides being right into that win, or besides being at 30-yard line, you're punting right into that win. Wing to the left side for the Cats. Split backs behind... The quarterback in the handoff and uh -oh. dropped the football. I believe West Orange Stark has it. They do. Julian Richard on the recovery. Didn't look like that bad of a handoff, Tom. It looked like he may have been. If we watch it on the replay, it looks like he was trying to change. No, he never no, got, he the, ball never got the ball from Dillard. Dillard and Young make the first miscue of the game, and if anything will turn this game around for anybody, it will be turnovers. So the Silver Crush now with their work cut out for them. West Orange Stark on the turnover first and 10 at the Paris 30. They have the wind, 4.22 to go here in the first quarter of play. That solved the punting problem, didn't it? Darwin Ferguson trying to get those fans on the sidelines into this ball game. Cats are late getting in, and they hand off right up the middle to uh, Brown, I believe, and he's down inside the 30 to the 25, and Paris really only had 10 men on the field because Key Battle was still getting instructions on the sideline. So some poor uh, timing, as it were, between the defensive unit and the play calling on the sideline. Jelmar Rhodes on the carry, the fullback for five. It'll be second down and five, and the Cats caught a little short that time. Now in a five-man defensive front, balanced offensive set for West Orange Stark. Once again, the handoff to Rhodes, and Rhodes powers down inside the 25, down to about the 22. He'll be two yards short of the yardage for the first down. The clock continuing to run at 340. No score, West Orange Stark and Paris for the Class 4A championship. And the Mustangs trying to take advantage of the game's first turnover. This is the biggest play defensively of the Wildcats so far. They had a good third down and long situation here that uh, they let the the end slip across there and catch the pass this is the one they need to shut down and, and make Sark go for the field goal instead of giving up the seven points on the turnover. Tremaine Lewis brings his team to the line of scrimmage once again a power set power eye now they pitch to the deep back he is at the 25 he is at the 20 he is down to the 18 yard line before Terrence Brown is finally knocked down first and 10 for Stark they have the first penetration of the afternoon and let's watch Terrence Brown, a 1,000-yard regular season rusher for West Orange Stark as he takes the deep pitch. 
And there is a penalty fact. flag on the play, and it's against Holding West against Orange Stark. Stark. So the nice run by a Brown that goes down to the 18 will be wiped out. And we will have third and 12 from the 32, which changes the play call considerably and does wipe out the penetration, by the way. And the first down. And the first down. So a holding penalty, our first yellow hanky of the afternoon, comes at 3.07 in the first quarter. We were busy watching the replay, and uh, luckily a couple of sharper eyes caught the yellow flag on the field. There's so much de debris down on the field right now, the trash blowing through. You can't see what's the uh, flags and what's just uh, rosters that have been blowing out of the stands. Where's the trash and where's the debris? Which is which? We won't comment on that because somebody might get offended up here in the booth. <laughs> Third down and 12 for West Orange Stark. Four-man defensive front for Paris. No pressure. Lewis over the middle, overthrows. No, he got him off, and he got the ball! Oh, my. I thought he was going over the middle. Instead, he goes down the far sideline, and that is Eric West, their star wide receiver, and he drops it in the end zone. And it hit him in a bad place right in his hands. Look at this. A perfectly thrown ball with the wind. Paris was suckered on the play, and West had it and dropped it. The Paris defensive backs, Randy, looked like they bit a little bit toward the middle on the pump fake, by, they did. as I did. Yeah, we were all looking inside, and I thought he had overthrown West by four or five steps, but that just shows you the, the kind of speed that Ari West has got. And West Orange is not going for a field goal on fourth down at about 11, and Paris has called a timeout. Wildcats want to think this one over. 2.44 to go in the first quarter of play. West Orange Stark, nothing. The Paris Wildcats, nothing. The West Orange Dark Mustangs thinking about what might have been as they plan to go for it on 4th and 12 from the Paris 32. Eric West dropping a perfect pass from the end zone for an apparent touchdown. As you look at it, Tom, as we looked at the replay, it looks as, as he's reaching out for the ball, his right leg hits and it almost jars him a little bit and keeps him from making the reception, whereas maybe if he would have been on the other foot, it may have been a little bit different, but uh, a big break for the Wildcats and, and uh, West Orange comes out on a 4th down and mega yards to go, actually about 12 yards to go. I'm sure Alan Wilson calling his defensive secondary over there and saying you're letting them run loose, fellas, and that is not the way to do it. We have a double wide out to the left side, wide receiver split wide this way, and they will throw. Here comes the pressure. He's got a man wide open at the 20, caught. 10-yard line, he will score, touchdown. As we look at it on the playback monitor, we get it, Tom. They had people doubled off on the corners here. As you see the two Wildcat defenders, they get hung up on the right side. We can't see it from the screen view here. You'll see them both right there together. The, the uh, Eric cut inside his outside man and it pulled the two Wildcat defenders together and left him wide open by himself out there. First, it, uh, well, pardon me, it is six nothing now. West Orange Stark as we go for the extra point. A big pass play, 32-yard touchdown pass from Tremaine Lewis to Eric West. The kick is up. The kick is good. And with 2.36 to play, it is West Orange Stark 7, Paris nothing as they take advantage of the first turnover of the game. The Wildcats on a uh, Gary Young fumble and never got the ball from James Dillard. And uh, now West Orange Stark in the end zone has the lead. And this is, uh, if you're Paris and you want to get that state championship, this is not where you want to be. No, you do not want to be behind a uh, West Orange Stark team and coming back. You don't want to be behind anybody. All right, let's go back to the touchdown. And you'll see that Uzi and Smith are on the outside here. Smith cuts in behind Uzi, pulls his two Paris defenders. You see him there at the left side of the screen and leaves Smith all alone. All he has to do is beat one Wildcat defender and go seven yards untouched into the end zone. And he actually had the weight on the ball. Nobody was close enough to cover. Coming in late for Paris was uh, Roddy Wortham, but Wortham just didn't really have an opportunity to get there. So the Wildcats with a two-deep receiving tandem at their five-yard line, trailing 7-0. They have been here before, though, Randy, and have responded well. It's something, it's something they haven't been in the last three weeks, though, Tom. They have scored first on the last three three playoff games against Kilgore, against Denison, and against Cleburne. They scored first, of course, Cleburne, they scored the only only time. But all three of their previous playoff games, they have scored first and went on to victory. So this is something they've not experienced in the last four weeks. It will be a test for the Paris Wildcats as they trail 7-0, and we are ready for the West Orange Star kickoff. The 
It's a very high kick and rather short. Comes down at the 12-yard line, taken by Johnson there to the 25-yard line, still on his feet, threading his way to the 29, where Paris will have it first and 10. Michael Johnson on the carry. And the Cats now will try to solve that West Orange Stark defense. They punctured it all the way down inside the West Orange Stark 40-yard line before being thrown back on their first offensive possession. Had the fumble on their second possession that set up the Mustang touchdown. Two minutes to play in the first quarter as Paris comes to the line of scrimmage. James Dillard with a wing set to the right side. Calls his team down, and Dillard wants to throw. Looks downfield, has a man open short at the 33-yard line. Still on his feet, and finally stopped out of bounds at about the 34. Darwin Ferguson to the right side. Uh, a good effort, second effort, gave another yard or so. As the pass was perfectly thrown, we looked at the replay monitor. Good lead blocked there by Key Battle. Gives Dillard a little more time. Ferguson turns upfield right here and picks up another yard or so out to about the 34-yard line. Jimmy Knox on the coverage for West Orange Stark, a gain of five for Paris. It will be second down and a short five to go just inside the Wildcat 34. Wing set to the left side. They will sweep that way on the quick pitch. Henderson looking for a block. Can't get it. Is down at the line of scrimmage. Richard Jones attempts to throw a block in the way of Fred Johnson. Johnson bypasses it and uh, shuts down that run to the left side the way he did on the on the first possession as we check the replay. Henderson cuts around the outside. Jones tries to make the block there, but the back slips through and gets Henderson for, uh, actually got back to the line of scrimmage, so it's still going to be third down and five. And good backside pursuit by West Orange Stark. I think they would have had uh, Marcus, whether he had made the corner or not. They were coming that fast. Ball on this, the near hash mark. Harris now on a wing left side. I'll bet they go right. Well, Dillard will roll right, wants to throw, looks downfield, has a man there. That is Ellis, and it is almost intercepted and then dropped. Julian Fourth Richard had, had left hand on it, had right hand on it, and then Ellis had a shot at it, but it's dropped out. Paris has not done, Tom, what Kerrville did last week as we watched the monitor. Dillard drops back, gets good blocking from Henderson, floats the ball up. Julian Richard reaches in with left hand, then has right hand, then Ellis has a shot in it, but it winds up on the ground in a punting situation. Paris has not done what Cleburne was successful at last week. Kerrville. Kerrville. Thank you. It's a Cleburne. Uh, <laughs> what Kerrville was successful with last week, and that was running trap plays or off-tackle plays, kind of mixing up the backfield a little bit. Gary Young back for his second punt of the afternoon, standing inside his 20. Good snap. He will get this one off. It's a high kick, but very kick. short. Very short and goes out of bounds at the Wildcat 43. Only about a nine-yard punt for Gary Young. And West Orange Stark set up in great field position. These were things that Alan Wilson was concerned about. You have to have every, every element, offense, defense, kicking game. The offense has caught the ball up once, and now Gary Young gets off a bad punt out to the 44s where they mark it. So West Orange Stark with, again, great field position. Paris trailing 7-0, 128 to go in the first quarter, and the Mustangs have the ball first and 10 at the Paris 44, a power set, and the counterplay right up the middle and nowhere to go, and dropped at the 43 for a gain of one. Brown started across that left side of the defense, and Kendricks comes up to make the hit right at the line of scrimmage and breaks him down. So a good defensive play by Kendricks that time as he didn't take the misdirection coming right side, stayed in his position, waited for Brown to come right to him, second down at nine. The impression here is that Terrace has controlled the West Orange Stark running game for the most part. They have really been burned by the passing attempt. Well, that's been the, uh, the hard core of the Paris defense all year long is the passing defense. Split backs behind for Maine Lewis on second down and nine at the Paris 43, and Lewis will throw. Here comes the pressure. He has plenty of time. A man open. It is incomplete. Lots of, uh, in basketball, you would call that hand checking down there, but the no ball doubt. was well overthrown. Incomplete, and it'll be third down now at about nine. So we pick it up on the replay monitor, Tom. As you mentioned, hand checking. Michael Hightower was right there with him, a little bit behind the intended receiver. Ball was overthrown, but Hightower... And Eric West going to a little push to shove meet out there and uh, right hand to left hand and fighting for position, but the ball was way overthrown as it was. Third down and nine for West Orange Stark at the Paris 43 is the Silver Crush defense being challenged yet one more time in the first quarter. 45 seconds to play. Lewis again back to pass. No pressure. Oh, knocked away on a nice defensive play. 
Michael Johnson coming up almost had that one as he had the position, stepped inside his man, and he's kicking himself for not interception, not intercepting that one. As we look at the replay monitor, Tom. He might have had six had he held on to the ball. He was cutting on the diagonal to the right side, and there was nobody over there as the moving pocket had swung to the near side of the field. So fourth down, and let's see if Stark will punt it this time. They are lining up in deep punt formation. They went for it on fourth down last time. Double deep for Paris, a nice high kick, and this one coming down inside the 10, taken there. And dropped at the eight yard line. I don't know what he was doing. I think he might have thought he called for a fair catch and couldn't run with it. He may have. Hightower fields the ball right there at the seven yard line, and he just takes two steps back and forth and said, I don't have any place to go. There's nothing but blue shirts in front of me. And fell actually, down at the nine. Actually, with the wind behind him, Tom, he would have probably been better off to maybe give that ball a bounce and see if it got on into the end zone and get a little bit better field position out of it. Harris will have to run one more play. Two seconds left to go on the first quarter. Our score, West Orange Stark, seven. Paris nothing. James Dillard doesn't want to make a mistake here. Sets the Cats down. Counter play up the middle to the 10 to the 11-yard line. And when we come back for the second quarter of play, well, check that. The clock is at 25 and running. There's some there's some uh, lights, out. lights missing yeah, right there in the middle. And I thought that was a 32 instead of an 02 all ago. 17 and 6. That was probably the last play of the first quarter, though. I think we can safely say that. A gain of two yards on the carry up the middle. It'll be second down and eight. Dillard pulls him back. He doesn't want to go to the line of scrimmage. He wants to go talk to Allen Wilson and try to regroup and see what they're going to do with the win now that they've fought it for the first quarter. When we come back for the second quarter of play, Paris will have the win at the end of one. The defending state class 4A champion, West Orange Stark Mustang 7, Paris nothing. Second quarter action at Kyle Field in College Station. And we do have some first quarter statistics for you very quickly with the Mustangs up 7-0. Paris has only had 47 yards total offense. West Orange Stark 80. But the big play, the turnover that set up the West Orange Stark touchdown. We'll get back to these statistics in just a moment. Paris now second down and eight just outside their own 10-yard line. They operate in the shadow from the press box here at Kyle Field. Dillard with the ball. Counter action 10. Oh, stuck. Marcus Henderson still has feet. driven backwards that time right at the line of scrimmage Tom by DeBron Temple. He fights away from Temple, gets back up about five yards, splits to the outside, and finally Chris Ori comes down with the tackle, but uh, not before Henderson puts a plus two uh, on where he would have been down as we watch it on the replay as it's right in the shadow of the end zone. Here's, it's almost like we were at Texas Stadium two weeks ago. We have a shadow in one part of the field, and that's where they are right now. It will be third down and uh, a long two or a short three, depending on which side of the line of scrimmage you're on. Harris with the ball, wing set to the left side, the wide side of the field. Let's see if they sweep that way as Dillard has the ball on the snap and the quick pitch. Outside, inside, Gary Young, first down at the 20. Over the 20, still on his feet and struggling to the 24-yard line where Paris will have a first and 10. They will mark Gary Young down at the 23-yard line. Young able to find the seam that time behind Dillard as Dillard takes out the corner on the left side that time, and Young fights in behind him, carries a couple of men a couple of yards, and gets out to the 23-yard line, and the Wildcats definitely need some breathing room, Tom. First and 10, Paris. They do have the wind here in the second quarter of play. Cats with the ball, Dillard, play fake, wants to throw, wants to go deep, and has a man down there, but it is almost intercepted. Intended for Michael Johnson down around the 35-yard line, but uh, only the West Orange Stark defenders close to that one, Ron ha uh, Roy Hasley, rather, in the defensive secondary, along with Julian Richard. Double coverage downfield deep on Johnson as Dillard, we're looking at the replay monitor. Dillard airs this one out a pretty good ways now, Tom. He's about uh, almost 50 yards in the air. So a little bit of difference in that pass in the one he threw earlier to Kenneth Ellis again into the win. So he's going to have to have a little bit of difference of, of getting his timing down. I'm sure we'll see a little bit of difference in Tremaine Lewis's throws once throwing into the win in this quarter. Wide receivers right and left for Paris. Second down and 10. Dillard straight back. Well Here's the draw. To the 25 and down at the 26, a gain of only three. 
Marcus for Harrison Paris. on Martin. the delayed draw and coming up, staying at home was Rick Daring. Rick Daring on the play defensively for West Orange Stark. So the Cats get uh, only two as they mark it at the 25. It'll be third and eight and a very big play now for Paris. Cats on their opening possession drove inside the West Orange Stark 40 yard line. Since then they have not crossed midfield. We have a double wide set to the right side for the Wildcats on third and eight. And Dillard on the sprint roll, looks, and we'll keep run. It. Dillard at the 30, and uh, dives forward to about the 32, but a nice defensive play to keep him from getting to the first down. Rick Daring, the linebacker again. Nice lateral pursuit, turned him back inside on the replay, you'll see it. Looking in the shadows, Deering turns him to the inside, gets a hand out, and that stops Dillard from getting to the first down stage. And you've got to think if Dillard would have kept on going on the outside, Deering was the only person that was within four or five yards at him. Had James decided to go on to the sidelines, he probably could have made that other two yards of the first down, Tom. So Gary Young, I believe his fourth punt of the afternoon. Back inside his 20 at the 16. As... The Wildcat offense stopped again. There's the kick, a very high kick. It is coming down at the 45. It's a big bounce for Paris. Inside the 30, still on the roll. Down to the 21, down to the 20-yard line. Inside the 20, inside that the 19. The wind is blowing on the ball, folks, and it is going, going, still blowing. going inside the 15. Push on it, Johnson. And down to the 14, first and 10, West Orange Stark. Our score with 8.54 to go in the first half of play. West Orange Stark, seven, Paris, nothing. A 55-yard wind-aided punt for Gary Young, and West Orange Stark has it first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. Handoff, no, they run the pitch this time to Terrence Brown to the 15. Loose and brought down on the outside at about the 19, 20-yard line, a gain of six. Wildcats had everybody covered but Brown that time as he found running room to the outside. Stephen Walker goes over to make the cut back and gets some uh, lateral pursuit from Richard Jones as we watch it on the monitor. A good move up by Harrison that time. Sticks Tremaine Lewis. Walker makes the uh, initial head then Richard Jones and Darwin Ferguson come in to finish him off but not before uh, good for about a five uh, close to a six yard pickup. Second down and four for West Orange Stark at their 19 and a half yard line. Wildcats need to hold here. Long count by Lewis has it. And off, full back. No, pitch back, and he's got running room. He's got the corner. 20, 25, 30. And out of bounds at the 32-yard line is Brown. Well, Bobby Harrison is doing his job, Tom, and that he was assigned to remain Lewis on the pitch play. And as you watch, Harrison comes through, top of your screen, hits Lewis, but Lewis gets it off, gets a block on the outside by the pulling right guard, and enough to turn him around the corner. And that's the biggest run I think Terrence Brown has had this afternoon, Tom. First and 10, West Orange Stark at their own 32-yard line on the run by Brown. Brown 12, 8, how many is that? Five carries for 24 yards. A 12-yard carry there is his largest. Split backs behind Tremaine Lewis as the Stark Mustangs on the move again. Hand off to Elmar Rhodes up the middle, running room out over the 35 and hammered at the 38-yard line. Darren Lane had the position that time and a good move by Rhodes at the line of scrimmage gets him the extra three or four yards as uh, Lane got one hand on him but then had to pick up some help from the linebackers to bring him down with a four-yard pickup. Gain of four, second down and six for West Orange Stark. The defending state class 4A champions lead this one 7-0, 7 7.33 to go in the first half of play. And they are moving into the win. Jermaine Lewis rolls, pitches, and the ball is loose at the 20. Picked up there, and he will be dragged down for a loss inside the 30-yard line at the 29. Oh, watch the left side here. I thought I thought Fuller was going to be offsides, Thomas. He was inching up. You can see him way back deep, top right of the field. Big hit from Marcus Henderson. Lewis just had to get rid of the ball because Henderson was right in his face. He pitches it deep back, but a good job by Delmar Rhodes to uh, bring the ball back up and turn what could have been a devastating loss into only about a six-yard loss. Third and 14 for West Orange Stark, just inside the 30-yard line. The point to reach up around the 43. Terrence Lewis looks, pumps, throws, incomplete. And a penalty flag is down. 
Looked like there was motion to the left side of the line that time, and it was. That's going to be the call. Wildcats will decline this and be happy to take that punt. Into the wind. Fourth down for West Orange Stark coming up just inside their own 30. They lead 7-0, 7-11 to play in the first half. The only touchdown of this game set up on a turnover. Harris almost had one of their own. And I think what we saw with Kerrville Tivy is if you put enough pressure on the quarterback, he has a tendency to panic perhaps a little bit and toss early. Exactly. That's what Paris is going to have to do is start putting more than just the three down lineman pressure on Tremaine Lewis. The punt coming is a low driving kick. Will come down at the 50, take a bounce. Paris has it there, and he's dropped right at the 43. That is Michael Johnson. Johnson picked it up with a West Orange start player right in his face and paid the price. Paris first and 10 at their own 43, but Randy, their best field position since that initial drive with the opening kickoff. Well, they've got to make use of the win while they've got it, Tom, if they're going to develop anything passing. They've gone only two passes shallow and, and been pretty good there, but the two down passes have had good coverage downfield by the Mustangs. Harris with the wing tee and the wing set inside the tight end on the right side, and they will sweep that way, cut it back inside at the 45, at the 50, and at the 49 in West Orange Stark territory, the first time since early in the first quarter that Paris has crossed the midfield stripe. Carlos Bass uses some good technique in the backfield, making this cut here, Tom. He starts outside, follows his blocking, finds a seam, uh, drives a West Orange Stark Mustang across the 50, uh, pick up about seven yards of the carry, penetrating that 50-yard line, and Paris needs a long, time-consuming touchdown drive here, Tom. 6.32 to play in the first half. Paris second down and three at the Stark 49-and-a-half-yard line. And they'll sweep the other way inside. That is key battle inside the 45, and battle is down to the 40-yard line where it will be first and 10 Paris. Key much stronger than he was last week, and that play right there, Tom, tells a lot about it. He had the power to take on a man head up as we watch it on the replay here at about the 43. Takes him and drives him all the way back to the 40-yard line. First and 10 Paris. And the Cats trying to take advantage of their best field position since early in the first quarter of play. 6.09, the clock running. West Orange Stark leads uh, Paris 7 to nothing. Wing to the left side. Double tied end, and now the wing in motion. And they will sweep back away from the motion. A good block by Battle, and Henderson inside the 40, down at about the 38. Maybe the 39, a gain of about one, maybe two. And coming across very quickly again, Rick Daring, who has had a heck of a first half defensively. Of course, not, not having the field glasses, it's, it's actually Johnny Robinson that gets the pick here because you can't see the one or the three when he's running away from you. And a great job by Daring. We've called his name all afternoon, probably will continue to do that. Got a good block, lead block by the fullback, but Daring comes up and makes the tackle with only a two-yard pickup. Second down and eight, Paris at the 38-yard line. 5.22 to go on the first half. Motion in the backfield behind Dillard. And Dillard now wants to throw. Looks downfield. Now we'll pick it up. He's got lots of room to run. Stays on his feet. First down and out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. James Dillard on the carry for Paris. Pumped once. Looked up and had the left side wide open. He was so surprised to see nobody. As we look at it on the replay, he looks. Look at the look. He just says, well, there's nobody over here. I can run for the first down. And he does just that. Turns it up. Rick Daring comes in, makes the initial hit right there. But Dillard is able to pick up another three yards and get first down yardage to the 28-yard line. But Randy, his receiver was open also. First and 10, Paris at the 28-yard line in West Orange Stark territory. Dillard will pitch inside, 25 and down to the 23, a gain of about five on that carry. And that is Gary Young for Paris. Very much quicker did Gary Young get to the line than what he has been. Look how fast he turns his corner now. Instead of springing out wide, Paris is kicking out and then coming right back into the seam. This is what the momentum that they need to get in there. This is what you started seeing about the fourth possession against Cleburne last week. 4.44 to go on the first half of play. Paris down 7 nothing, but driving now at the West Orange Stark 23-yard line. Paris is warming up. Dillard, again the pitch. Inside, 20. First down, 15, 14, 13-yard line. 
Marcus Henderson following that lead block from Key Battle finds a seam, cuts back inside, gets inside the 15 to about the 13 and a half, 428, and the, the uh, Cats need to get out and score this one, even this thing up, and see if they can get some momentum back on their side. Silver Crush doing a great job on that last defensive stand to give them the good field position to uh, start this drive with, Tom. First and 10, Paris at the West Orange Stock, 13-yard line. Ball Marcus, on the near hash mark. Marcus Henderson just went over 1,000 yards with that carry. Wing set to the right side. And now in motion across the backfield. And they will sweep to the wing side. Battle looking for a block. Gets one at the 10. He's at the 5. It. And out of bounds near oh. the 4-yard line. Marcus Henderson again. It looks so close. Johnny Robinson, actually, Tom, and it looks so close as Rick Daring, all, all the people on the sidelines over there are hollering for a face mask. And look at this. When Daring comes in, he will reach right hand in on the helmet and watch Robinson's face go backwards. Look at this. If he didn't have face mask, he had a whole lot of helmet because Robinson head just kicks over to the left side as they take him out of bounds at the five, a yard short of first down yardage. Second down and one for Paris with the West Orange Stark five. 3.58 to go in the second quarter. Dillard, handoff up the middle. Gary Young is close for the first down inside the five yard line and perhaps inside the four. If he gets inside the four, it's first and goal for, for a Paris. They're awful close to it. And they will call a timeout now as they check with the sideline, and they will uh, they will bring the chains on to measure for this one. So with a measurement coming up and 3.48 to play in the first half, our score, West Orange Stark 7, the Paris Wildcats nothing. Forty-eight to go on the second quarter of play. West Orange Stark seven, Paris nothing, but the Wildcats are driving first and goal as the measurement gives it to them at the three-yard line, Mustang territory. Cats at the line of scrimmage will set the wing strong to the right side. Dillard sets them down, has the ball, here's the pitch, inside, five, at the three, at the two, and down close to the one-yard line. Great second effort that time for Marcus Henderson because Jimmy Knox makes the initial hit in the backfield, Tom, and Henderson could have very easily been trapped back there for a loss as he makes the hit right here on the replay. He scoots through, and finally coming over to make the final hit was Ron Hasley, but not before Marcus gets down inside the two-yard line, second and goal from about the one-and-a-half. Paris second and goal, the wing now to the left side, which is the short side of the field. And they will go that way, inside, and touchdown. touchdown! Marcus Henderson from a yard and a half out, caps off a, a big drive, and we'll uh, give you the, the plays and how far as soon as we attempt this extra point, and that looks like Cliff Brooks coming out to attempt the extra point. It was a 57-yard drive, we'll tell you how many plays it took in just a moment. But Paris on the scoreboard, 7-6 the score, and Brooks will be on to attempt to tie this one up. A very, a very important series for Paris there. They're back in the ball game. They're competitive now, and the bugs have gone. He's got the Paris fans standing on their feet. They have most of the last three weeks, I think. I think so, too. Dillard to hold. The snap is back. Brooks' kick is up. He missed right it. The oh, he got it. I'm right sorry. Right I missed that thing. <laughs> I'm glad I missed it and he didn't. 3-0-2 <laughs> to play in the first half of this game, the state class 4A championship, and the Wildcats have evened it up. Harris 7, West Orange Stark 7. Play, and we are all even now at 7-7. Seven and seven. The Paris Wildcats, the defending state champion, West Orange Stark Mustangs. That two-yard touchdown run by Marcus Cornbread Henderson. Very glad to kick off for the Wildcats. And Randy, right now, with momentum back on your side, you don't want to lose it going into halftime. This will be another big test for the Silver Crush defense. Well, a big big test here and Tom they've got three minutes and two seconds if the crush could hold them and maybe be, get that field position back and uh, get another chance to score here Harris would love to go in with a halftime lead Lamb's kick is high and deep into the end zone taken there and he's going to come out at the five at the eight and drop at the eight yard line and listen to the Wildcat fans across the way 
Dameron Judge with the reception in the end zone should have gone to an E. Instead decides to come out, makes the five-yard line, and then all sorts of problems as white jerseys close around him at the eight. He has nowhere to go in jail and down there, Gary Young with the tackle. Now we've at least got a football game. And now if you're West Orange Stark, you don't want to make a mistake down here. First and ten Mustangs at their own eight-yard line, and the Wildcat defense digging in. Tremaine Lewis, quarterback sneak, is free in the secondary at the 20, and dragged down a face mask at the 25-yard line. This is a break for the Mustangs. Rodney Kendricks, that time Tom, came right over the top of the center, had Tremaine Lewis at the line of scrimmage, lets him slip through his hand as you see it on the replay. Kendricks down on the ground. Roddy Wortham takes a shot. Ferguson comes in, and there's going to be the face mask as Ferguson. It looks like it's going to be a five-yarder from the way it looks because he grabs it, then lets go and grabs the hold. We'll see how they mark it off. No, they're going to oh, charge him 15, 15 yards. Yard face mask penalty against Paris. Where's, Randy, the, where's the replay official when you need him? Watch the replay one more time. This is not a deliberate face mask. He grasps and lets go. He does not pull. He doesn't twist. And that uh, does not seem to be according to the uh, way the rule was written. It should have been a, fa a five yard inadvertent face mask, I would think. But the officials rule differently. It is first and 10. West Orange Stark at their own 42 and a great opportunity with 2.44 to go. Lewis wants to pass, looks over the middle, is caught at the 45, at the 50, still on his feet, at the Paris 41 and out of bounds. Eric West again on the reception from Tremaine Lewis, and this is just what we hoped wouldn't happen with the Wildcat defense. Well, they get West coming right side to left, as you see it on the replay in the shadows here. Sort of. Roddy Wortham comes up to about the 48-yard line, tries to make the shot, but West, using his head, cuts the corner and gets out of bounds, stops that clock, preserves 2.35 left in the half. Two and a half to go in the first half. We're tied at seven, but West Orange start driving at the Paris 40-yard line. Five-man front for the Wildcat defense. Tremaine Lewis, draw play. draw play, and he is down at the Paris 35, knocked off his feet at the 40, but scrambles forward for five. It'll be second down and five. And Stephen Walker saved the play that time, Tom, because he grabbed one ankle of Lewis. As you watch it on the replay over here, you can see Walker comes in. It looked like his knee hit there, but great, great job of balance from Terrence, Terrence Brown to get inside the 35, just barely inside the 35-yard line of the Wildcats. Over 1,600 yards rushing for Brown coming into this game. Unbalanced line, strong right. They'll pitch and run that way. Thank you. Rhodes, there's a penalty flag down as Rhodes is down around the, the Paris 33-yard uh, line. Now let's read the flag. It's against West Orange Stark. And this one will come back. Rhodes carries inside the 35 and wipe this one out and bring up, uh, let's say, second down and close well, to 10. Well, let's, let's don't wipe it out. Well, they are going to go ahead and take it, it looks like, but that would be a third down and four situation here, and they were discussing the poss possibility of taking the illegal procedure penalty or not taking the legal procedure penalty. They're going to move him back to the 40-yard line and call it second down and 10, but they would have been left with a third down and four situation. I think it's a wise move. The way they throw the ball short, four yards is not much to pick up for West Orange Stark. True. And I think the Cats want another shot at second down, hold them here, and force them into a third and long situation. 153, clock running in the first half. We are tied, but West Orange Stark is driving following the Paris touchdown. Four-man Paris defensive front. Motion in the backfield for West Orange Stark. Long count for Maine Lewis. Wants to throw. Backside got it. pressure. Oh, 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 and who's got it? Oh, Paris has got it. Paris has it at the 45, first and 10. And backside pressure hammers for Maine Lewis in the backfield and causes him to cough it up. Look at the pressure coming from the top of your screen. I think it is Michael Fuller. We were talking about him earlier. Lewis never sees him, and Fuller just head up, hits him. Lewis did not have time to get the, the arm started forward, thus the fumble, and I believe it was Johnson that came up with the fumble recovery and a big defensive play for that Orange Crush defense. 107 to play in the half, and Paris now with the first and 10 at their own 46-yard line. Unbalanced line, strong to the left. And Dillard straight back to pass, is going long, has a man on the sideline, it is a simultaneous catch and then incomplete. They both had it going up. Coming down when they hit the ground, it popped out. So second down and 10 for Paris. A nice play though, Randy, if you got that little of time left to go ahead and take it. And we have a West Orange Stark man down on the field of play. And that looks like it is 
Julian Richard. He's getting up, though, and uh, it looks, looks like, like he's he all fell right. on the ball, Tom, because they both went up with the ball, and he and Fuller came back down, and the ball ca got caught right under the uh, rib cage of his shoulder pads. Looks like it may have knocked the breath out of him. He's going to come off, get a rest, and go back in. 129 to go in the first half of play. We said 107, but once again, the three doesn't look like a three <laughs> over there. It looks more like a zero, so we'll try to be more conscientious of that in the second half. 129. The clock stopped on the incompletion. Paris again in what would appear to be a passing formation on second and 10 from their own 46. Here's the draw play. At the 46, Gary Young. Uh -oh. And he lost the uh -oh. football, picked up by Paris and still on his feet and running with it over the 50-yard line and down at the 48. And that's a running back, and he can do that. I think that's key battle. That is key battle, mistaken. and Young turned and pitched the ball to him. Tom, if we look at the play here, Young took the ball and turned back around. You'll see him make the cut here. He starts getting hit. He oh, pitches no, he it back in the air. Up. It popped it out. He was popped out on the tackle, and Battle picked it out of the air. Watch Young again. He picked. Uh, he was hit. The ball popped up. The Battle picks it out of the air. It goes down to the 47-yard line in West Orange territory, and it's third down now and three with 48 seconds to go on the half, and we are tied at seven. Unbalanced line. And Dillard on the half roll, looks downfield, has the ball. Here comes the pressure. Dillard looking for the corner at the 50 and runs out of bounds. And that will stop the clock with 35 seconds to play. Good downfield coverage at time for the Mustangs. Gary Young throws a block, and we've got a flag down on the play. Generally in the area where you would expect to find offensive holding, and uh, I believe is. that is, is what it is, but uh, West Orange Stark may elect <coughs> to... Uh, Go ahead and take the play. It would bring up fourth down and long. And Paris, I think, in this situation would probably punt. There's your signal from the official. And they did turn it down. So Paris is going to be in a punting situation. It is fourth down for Paris from the 50-yard line. We are tied at seven. 35 seconds to go in the first half. West Orange Stark scores off a Paris turnover. Paris on a 57-yard drive following a West Orange Stark punt in the second quarter to tie it up and lots of defense in between and a couple of missed big plays. Gary Young standing back inside his 40-yard line at the 36. Good snap. Young, a better kick this time. Much better. Much better. Down at the 10. This inside. one will go into the end zone. A 50-yard punt for Gary Young. The clock stopped at 27 seconds. West Orange Stark will have the ball, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. So, in essence, Randy, really a fairly even game. We've seen some big plays for West Orange Stark, a couple of big plays for Paris. Perhaps the biggest may, that may come back to haunt West Orange Stark going into the locker room, the drop touchdown drop pass. pass. Definitely. There, that and also the turnover down here just moments ago. That, uh, they were driving very handily down the field on Paris. That could have easily been three points, if not seven, and uh, been a West Orange Stark lead. But the, the turnover there hurts West Orange Stark. So the Wildcats trying to stiffen once again. 27 seconds to go in the half. Let's see if West Orange Stark tries for the big play. No. And there is a penalty flag down, I believe, before we start. Or is there? No, nope. West Orange Stark just, just simply went to the knee. That's just some debris there. <laughs> Lewis takes the ball. No, he's just, still in the boot. Oh, oh he's, <laughs> you haven't thrown him yet, huh? <laughs> that is the last play of the first half. As the clock running inside five seconds, we'll remind you at the end of one half of play, it is all even at Kyle Field and College Station. Paris 7, West Orange Stark 7, back with the Paris High School Band halftime performance after this. We are back at halftime at Kyle Field and College Station, all tied up. The Paris Wildcats and the West Orange Stark Mustangs at 7. On the field, where the Aggie Band marches, is the Paris High Blue Blazes Band and the Blazettes. Let's go down and enjoy their halftime performance.
proud to announce that it has been selected to attend the Southern Instrumental Conductors Conference in Hattiesburg, Mississippi this February. This is also the third year in a row that the band has received the first division rating at the UIL Marching Contest. The band is led on the field by drum majors Chuck Fulbright, Karen Brock, Color Guard Captain Andrew Array, and Drum Corps Captain Andy Love. They will begin their performance today with the Christmas song, The Sound of Angels. And now, for your halftime entertainment, the Paris High School Blue Blazes Marching Band. Nation and Eddie Anderson back at Kyle Field in College Station, hoping you've enjoyed the halftime performance of the award-winning Paris High School Blue Blazes Band and Blazettes. As much as we have today, it has been a good afternoon of the Paris fans across the way having a great time. It started out looking bad for Paris with a turnover and a West Orange Star touchdown, but the Cats came up with a 57-yard drive in the second quarter. A Cliff Brooks extra point has evened it up. And we are at seven apiece. West Orange Stark and the Paris Wildcats at halftime at Kyle Field.
We are at halftime at Kyle Field in College Station on the campus of Texas A&M University. It has been one of those first halves that football fans love if you like defensive football. We have Elaine Ballard, the superintendent of the Paris Independent School District with us here at halftime. Elaine, I know you're a big football fan. It looked a little tight there in the first quarter, didn't it? It certainly did. Feeling much better now, though. A little disappointed that maybe the Wildcats didn't take that turnover and perhaps put something on the board near the end of the second quarter, though? A little disappointed, but I feel much better that they at least scored before halftime. West Orange Stark is almost beginning to look a little bit human. I, I think a lot of Paris fans came down here and figured that uh, underneath their uniforms, they might have had blue shirts with big red S's on them. Uh, <laughs> possibly so. <laughs> They're a pretty good football team, though, aren't they? They are. They are a super football team. They have a lot of class, a lot of character, but so do so does the Paris Wildcat team. Uh, I think they're very evenly matched in that they both show such good sportsmanship. And we just feel from Paris that it's a real honor to be able to play West Orange Stark. I know it's tied 7-7 at the half. It's a shame either one of these teams really has to lose. And for the Paris Wildcats, though, I think something very positive. It's been eight years since they've been in a state final. We know they went to Huntsville. I know you were probably there when they lost 19 uh, to Waco and lost 19 nothing to Huntsville. They have come out and I, I think played uh, perhaps a comparison with the 1980 team perhaps played a little bit more within themselves this year and it almost looked like seasoned veterans once they get to this level of play. That's correct and uh, I think what is, has been so great about our team is that they've just continued to improve game after game after game throughout our season and we're awfully proud of them. And I, I don't think you can say enough about uh, support groups like the Blue Blazes Band, who has been trying to prepare for all region plus prepare for this. You've got the Blazettes who have had to do extra work and you've got the cheerleaders that have had to do lots of extra work just a whole lot of people had to come together to make uh, and a fine crowd of fans from the Paris area all coming together to make this uh, probably one of the more memorable weekends in Paris high school history that's correct and I would say that I know they're all exhausted but we all had just one more bit of energy to share this Saturday afternoon and of course we hope we go away from this game this afternoon as the state 4A champs of football in the state of Texas be a nice Christmas present wouldn't it be wonderful our guys had a job to do when they came down here to play West Orange Stark, and I think they're performing that job real well out there on the field. Thanks very much for coming by and visiting with us. Thank you. Elaine Ballard, superintendent of the Paris Independent School District. Halftime continues from Kyle Field and College Station right after this. Halftime. Halftime is coming to a close here at Kyle Field in College Station where we are all tied up after two quarters of play. The Paris Wildcats and West Orange Stark Mustangs at seven apiece. Let's go to the first half statistics. It couldn't be more even, Randy, than if you'd written it out this way. Officially, the Wildcats with seven first downs. The Mustangs with six. Paris with the edge on the ground, 124 yards rushing to 48 for West Orange Stark. Flip it over for the passing. West Orange Stark with 82. Paris for five. Total offense, 130 yards for West Orange Stark, 129 for Paris. Passes completed, 5 of 11 with no interceptions for Tremaine Lewis. 1 of 5, no interceptions for James Dillard. Both teams have fumbled twice. Both have lost it once. The Paris fumble that was lost leading to the West Orange Stark touchdown. Both teams have been penalized 15 yards. Two flags on uh, West Orange Stark, one on Paris. It has been an interesting first half of play. Paris, a fumble on their second offensive possession in the first quarter, sets up the West Orange Stark touchdown from 32 yards out. And in fact, Randy, they hit that on a fourth down play, fourth and 12. And then Paris came back in the second quarter with a 57-yard touchdown drive, keyed by the runs of Marcus Henderson and the blocking of key battle to take it into the end zone and tie it up on Cliff Brooks' extra point. It has been everything we thought it would be. A great defensive game between two very good defensive teams. Both teams probably looking for that one big play to perhaps break this one open in the third quarter. Some individual stats for you for uh, halftime, too. Henderson is nine carries for 48 yards, one touchdown. Young is five carries for 27 yards. Battle, four for 18. On the other side of the line, Brown, seven for 35, and Lewis, three for 10. We'll be back with the third quarter kickoff of today's state class 4A high school championship game. A reminder, we are at halftime with our score. The Paris Wildcats, seven. The West Orange Dark Mustang, seven. Johnson, 13. We are preparing for the third quarter kickoff. The option will rest with West Orange Stark. Paris won the opening toss, elected to receive. 
and the captains will be going to the middle of the field here shortly to determine that. West Orange Stark will receive, I would think. Paris will kick. And yep. it will be interesting to see whether West Orange Stark elects to take the wind here in the third quarter or wait and take that wind in the fourth, Randy. They already have, and they have decided to uh, take the wind in the fourth quarter, and the, our uh, Paris has decided to take the win in the fourth quarter, and West Orange Stark will receive and go into the win in this first quarter. So Paris looks to uh, get down defensively, hopefully have made the adjustments at halftime, Tom, to get some coverage, uh, get some help back there on those corners because uh, the two high to, uh, the two Mikes, actually Mike Hightower and Mike Johnson, uh, Alan Wilson calls them the men on the island. They're going to have to ship in some help out to the island to get some coverage deep. Derek Lamb is teeing it up squarely between the hash marks on the left 40-yard line. And we got the directions wrong here. Obviously, the sun is setting behind us, which means that's the west. Those are the east stands over there, and that is the north end zone, and that is the south end zone. The Aggies do know how to build a stadium. Well, guys, good. Guys, I was told differently before the ball game started. Guys, I, I, I don't want to say I told you so. Yeah, but yes, you, you do. I told yes, you, you do. So. He doesn't look like an Aggie, does he? <laughs> back to talking about Marcus Henderson. He went over 1,000 yards today, Tom. We go back to 85 to Walter Alexander was the last 1,000-yard rusher for the Paris Wildcats. Before that, it was Dirks and Dino Kamer in 1980. I will tell you another thing. The wind is out of the north. Can't you tell? It's cold. Yes. <laughs> and the wind has died significantly since halftime, in fact. Well, Here is Lamb's kick, and this one is high and again very deep. Taken in the end zone, and he wanted out. to go down. He stays at the 5 to the 10. Best Got a choice. seam to the 20 and down to the 23-yard line. That time a better choice, although that knee almost touched in the end zone and would have brought the ball back to the 20. So West Orange will get the ball at their own 23-yard line. Let's watch the replay. He came awful close to touching that knee down in the end zone and, in fact, finally found a seam. And Randy, we've seen that before. Delay on something like that often causes the kick coverage to break down a little bit. Well, that's basically what happened that time, Tom, is uh, Julian Richard went down to almost his right knee. Then the Wildcats kind of let up a little bit, thinking that he was going to lay on it, and then he decided to come out and uh, brings it out to the 22 or 23. Yep, the score by quarters. West Orange Stark struck first. Paris came back in the second. Mustangs with the first opportunity here in the third from their 23. They'll pitch, try to go wide. There's the corner at the 25. Still on his feet and drives over the 30-yard line and down around the 34, and that will be a first down. Good lead blocking that time. As you can see on the, as we watch the replay here, Will DeWall is the leading guard, and he is out right in front of Rhodes, or, yeah, Jamar Rhodes, and he just puts his left hand on his back and follows him right around the corner, and uh, good for good first down yardage to the 34. I think we expected that to be more of Terrence Brown's type of play, the sweep to the outside, but Jelmar Rhodes certainly has the speed to get to the corner. First and 10, West Orange Stark, a gain of 11 on that play by Rhodes. Split backs behind Tremaine Lewis. Lewis handoff, first back through at the 40, at the uh, 35 rather, and knocked right down is Rhodes, I believe, on the carry. Brown. Is that Brown? Brown on the carry, and a whole slew of Paris Wildcats to meet him in the middle of the line after a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine for West Orange Stark. Rodney Kendricks there stays right in his linebacking position, steps up, meets Brown right at the line of scrimmage, and, and Brown has been held uh, fairly short of big yardage today, Tom. The only the big yardage, actually at 12 yards, is not big for Brown, but that's his most on one carry in the afternoon. Paris switches into a four-man defensive front with four linebackers. Here comes the blitz. Here's the draw play at the 38, the 39, the 40, and the 41, about three yards short of the first down, and that time they read the blitz and run the draw play right up the middle for West Orange Stark, and the Mustangs about three yards short of the first down. I think what we're seeing when Paris goes into the four-man line is the defensive end on the one side plays off the line and then tries to sneak in and get a little bit of a, a blitz action off that end. Exactly. Key battle goes down in the uh, the down stance. Michael Fuller on the other side of the line is up. He was the one that coughed, uh, made Lewis cough up the ball on the turnover right late in the first half. Third and three for West Orange Stark. A big play for the Silver Crush. The defensive unit digging in. Here's the pitch out of the power formation. He is hit in the back. The man will not get the first down. Knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line for a loss of one. 
Key Battle makes the initial hit, Tom, at about the 38-yard line, gives the defensive pursuit as we watch it on the monitor. You can see Key Battle beats two men, gets out, makes the hit at the 27 on Terrence Brown, and Michael Hightower comes up to finish him off at the 41, and that's going to be about four yards shy of where they need to be for first down yardage. Brown has been held to 42 yards rushing. The wind has picked up out of the north and is blowing rather briskly again into the face of West Orange Stark. A low snap. They will get the kickoff. It's high, and the wind will catch it and drop it uh, on a fair catch at the Paris 41-yard line, and I believe we'll have an interference with attempt to make a fair catch. That's what it's going to look like. Michael Hightower signaling for the fair catch, and downfield quickly, it looks like Jomar Rhodes that's going to be right in his face, and that's what it's going to be. It's an interference call against Jamal Rhodes, and he comes up right in the face of Hightower. Hightower does make the catch, but we're going to tack on a five-yard penalty here, and the Wildcats will start again with good field position as they did when they had the win in the second quarter. Harris, first and ten, just outside their own 45-yard line. Wing T set with the wing to the right side, the short side of the field. Dillard calls him down, has the ball, crossing action, pardon me, that's key battle over the 50 and inside West Orange Stark territory to the 47-yard line, and that is something we saw in the kerrville Tyvee game films between West Orange Stark and kerrville Tyvee running the cross buck or counter action up the middle, and that time battle breaks it big for about eight yards. Exactly what we were talking about in the first half, Tom. They went to the misdirection play and made West Orange spread out a little bit, got their linebackers out of the middle, and the uh, battle breaks it for eight. Now key battle setting on the left side fullback out of the wing tee. And now in motion as Dillard has it and rolls. That's a busted play. Dillard looks for a block. Trying to get to the corner. Will not. It'll be third down and long right. and a penalty flag. And that's a face mask. And we'll get the first down on the five-yard penalty if it's an inadvertent face mask. If they rule a flagrant face mask foul, it'll be 15. It looks like it's going to be enough yardage either way, Tom, because it's going to be right close to uh, five-yard territory is where they're going to need to be where the flag was thrown. And that time I, I couldn't uh, couldn't get an exact number, but it looked like that it was uh, Rod Hasley coming from that right linebacker position coming up. Uh, that time Battle went in, I mean, uh, key, yeah, key Battle went in motion and it looked like Dillard was expecting him not to be there, and Henderson goes off. Dillard looks to pitch, and there's nobody back nobody there. Nobody home, and he had to roll, and uh, good pursuit. Credit that to West Orange Stark. They had three guys out there, but as you said, Hasley grabbed the face mask. It's first and 10 Paris on the five-yard inadvertent face mask foul. First and 10 Paris inside the 44-yard line at West Orange Stark territory. Wing left. Motion again by Battle. They will go to the motion side. Battle looks for the kick out. Got, Got it. Down. At the 40. At the 38-yard line, Marcus Henderson. And to be quite honest, Henderson that time cut outside Battle's block. Battle was blocking to the outside, and Henderson ran right into the tackle. Watch it on the replay, Tom. As, as Key comes out, he makes the kick out block. And right here, if Marcus goes back inside, of course, they've got good lateral pursuit, good follow-up coming from the outside. But a good job again that time. We've called his name a lot this afternoon. Julian Richard fights off the block of Key Battle and picks up Henderson. But Henderson actually picks up about four yards on the play. First and, uh, pardon me, second down and five, Paris. A gain of five for Henderson at the 38-yard line now in West Orange Stark territory. Battle again in motion. Let's see if they sweep that way. Dillard, no, on the half row, looks downfield, wants to throw. Has a man there. Ellis overthrown in the end zone. Ellis had the position that time, and again, Julian Richards right there with him all the way. And uh, Dillard just overthrows the ball because Ellis had a couple of steps to the left as we watch it on the replay monitor. Dillard drops back to the 35, sets up, gets his foot planted good that time. A good tight spiral thrown by Dillard, but it's just a little bit too long for the outreach tans of Ellis. Actually, uh, Richard had a better shot at it than Ellis did. Third down and five, 35-yard line. Ball spotted on this, the near hash mark. Wide side of the field to the left side of the offensive formation. And the wing is set that way. Once again, battle in motion that way. Dillard looks to roll that way downfield. Needs some help. Is hit and is sacked. 
Back at the 44-yard line, we'll bring up fourth down and 10. Big defensive play for West Orange Stark. Vince Allen coming out of the secondary to apply the pressure. Well, as we watch it this time, Dillard did not have time to get set up because key battle coming out of the backfield at this point right here, you can't see, but he was open. Dillard had no choice because he was getting backside pressure. Linebackers coming that time as Gary Young stayed in the backfield to block. The linebacker came in on the, the rush, and uh, Paris goes into a punting situation. Gary Young back to punt. And now we have a call timeout on the field with 7.31 to play in the third quarter. Our score, West Orange Stark 7, the Paris Wildcats 7. Tom Allen with Randy Nation and Eddie Anderson from Kyle Field on the campus of Texas A&M University where we have seen a defensive struggle thus far this afternoon with seven and a half to go in the third quarter of play. We are tied, the defending class 4A champion West Orange Stark Mustang 7, the Paris Wildcats 7. The Silver Crush has played very, very well so far this afternoon. They have given up a couple of big plays, but outside of that, rather, have held the favored Mustangs fairly well in check. Gary Young back inside his 45-yard line at the 42 will punt away on this fourth down. We'll get the kick away, a low driving kick, fair catch called for, taken at the nine yard line. And I'm not real sure I wouldn't have let that one go into the end zone. Exactly, Tom. The way Gary Young has been kicking, he's kicking him low, and they usually bounce, as we saw the 55-yarder he had will ago. It bounced it at about the 32-yard line and rolls down inside the 15. So downing the ball at the 10-yard line, that's probably not going to be a good move. They lost 10 yards by, by not letting it go into the end zone. Well, for West Orange Stark, you don't want to make a mistake here, but if you're looking at it from the Paris side of the field, this is a big opportunity for the Silver Crush. If they can force a turnover or hold hold them deep and take advantage of a punt into the wind with 7.25 to go here in the third quarter. They could certainly uh, set themselves up in good operating pos uh, position on the uh, field here at Kyle Field. Here's the pitch back to Brown trying to get outside. That almost looked like a clip. He's still on his feet. No flags are down, and he's out to the 19-yard line. That will be close to the first down yardage for Terrence Brown. Looks like somebody does get Rodney Kendricks from behind here, Tom, as we look at, uh, he's down on the ground there. And then, oh, you can see him coming into your picture right there. And there, there is a legal clipping zone, though, within three yards of the line of scrimmage, and right, he may have been within the that case. zone. So, they say he's a yard short of the first down, second down and one, West Orange Stark, just outside, or just inside, rather, their own 19-yard line. Split backs behind Tremaine Lewis. Six-man line now for Paris, and Lewis is hit in the backfield, and he is back to the line of scrimmage maybe a half yard more. Richard Jones got through there quickly from that nose guard position, and he beat the, the block of the center and kind of flipped him to the side. As you see it on the replay monitor, he got a hold to Tremaine Lewis before Lewis could hand off to Rhodes. Luckily so, because there was nobody left to stop Rhodes had he gotten the handoff. Third down and one for West Orange Stark, and in fact, they may have lost about a half a yard on that. The Silver Crush lining up, and this time they put two men inside on the nose. They've got a six-man line. Paris jumped, got back. Here's a handoff, and he lost Bumbo. the football, I believe. Paris, Paris has, has got, got it. it at the 19. This was a free play for the Wildcats because the right halfback moved prior to the snap, and the Wildcats come up with it inside the 20. Paris has recovered the fumble. Watch it on the replay. Into the line of scrimmage, I think that is Jelmar Rhodes. No, it is Terrence Brown, and Brown trying to spin out of the tackle, loses the football, and coming in... Michael Fuller was on the bottom of the pile. With, <laughs> you can't see who come up with him, but you know he was wearing a white jersey as the Wildcats looking to take advantage of a big West Orange Stark turnover. The first turnover West Orange Stark had kept them out of the end zone, possibly as they were driving, and this could put the Wildcats in the end zone. Wing formation to the left side, double tight end set. Dillard has the ball, they'll pitch, look inside, Gary Young, 15. Gary Young at the 12-yard line and down. He'll be two yards short of the first down, a gain of eight for Gary Young. Great lead blocks again, key battle, James Dillard. Dillard makes the pitch to Young as we watch it on the monitor. You can see key battle right there taking him out. Dillard takes another way out. Gary Young just hits the seam in behind him and picks up a, a good eight, maybe almost nine yards. Call it second and two. 5.35 to play in the third. Paris with an opportunity to take its first lead of the football game. Second down and two at the West Orange Stark 12-yard line. Again the pitch. 
Henderson hit in the backfield, a great hit and drop at the 15. It'll be third and five. And great pursuit that time by West Orange Dark, Sean Jones with the initial contact, but he had a lot of company back at the 15. James Dillard misses Jones right here. He should have hit him there, and Jones sneaks right through and gets Henderson from behind. Dillard makes that block. Henderson has got some yardage, first down, possibly a touchdown because there was nobody on the outside had he had time to get outside and get around the corner. We are reminded, though, that West Orange Dark very tough against Kerrville Tyvee last week. Tyvee drove well between the 20s. We could not put the ball in the end zone but twice. Third and five, Paris. And they will sweep this way to the east side. Looking Dillard forward. looks. Oh, oh, caught and dropped at the 10-yard line. In and out of the hounds of Rodney Johnson, and he had it gone because there was nobody out there. And as you mentioned, Tom, he put it in the wrong place. He hit him in the hands. As you're looking at the replay, he's got a block, just floats it out to Johnson. It's right through his hands, and he was uh, long gone because there was eight yards of green grass between him and the end zone, or turf as it may be. Let's see, uh, Paris is lining up for a field goal attempt. It would be a 32-yard attempt from the west hash mark, or east hash mark, I'm sorry. They would have the wind at their back. They do have the wind at their back. It is Cliff Brooks in, and they're going to spot the ball. It uh, looks to be about the 20 and a half, so about a, almost a 31-yard kick for Brooks. Let's watch it. Snap is back. Kick is on the way. It is good. good. It, it is good. good. Right through the middle. And with 4.36 to play in the third quarter, the Paris Wildcats have converted a West Orange Stark turnover into points. The Wildcats have taken their first lead of the game. It is Paris 10, West Orange Stark 7. Derek Lamb will kick off for Paris as the Cats take a West Orange Stark fumble at the Mustang 20, move it down to the 15, have a pass dropped at the 10, and settle for a 31-yard Cliff Brooks field goal. Paris has its first lead ever in a state championship game, and to be quite uh, frank, their first points ever in a state <laughs> championship game. Also, Tom, Paris has scored the last 10 points. In 1980, the Cats were shut out by Huntsville, 19-0 in Waco. So the Cats are reaching new ground now with every play in this football game. It is 10-7 Paris, 4.36 to go in the third. And Lamb, who's had a great day kicking off with the wind, hits another one deep. This one taken at the two, to the five, to the 10, straight up the middle of the field, yeah. hits the seam at the 27-yard line and knocked down there. And getting up off the bottom of the pile for Paris is Clarence Sims. West Orange Stark goes to work at their own 28-yard line, and now every play for the Paris Silver Crush defense becomes the most important one because West Orange Stark has the same kind of ability as Paris to break the big play and turn the score around on the scoreboard within a matter of seconds. Right, and any, any play from the line of scrimmage could go any amount of yards for either one of these two offenses. So let's watch the Silver Crush defense. Four-man line this time with three linebackers. Now make it a five-man set. Hand off inside, counter play and drop. Darren Lane comes through, fights off the, the block on the left side by the tackle. Lane steps up, makes the hit, drives him down, and a great defensive play that time for Paris. And that's what they needed though, defensively, Tom, to get some momentum started. Let's give Rodney Johnson credit on that also. Second down and 11 for West Orange Stark, a loss of one on that carry. Clock running with now under four minutes to play in the third quarter. The two-time defending state class 4A champions at the line. Split backs behind for May and Lewis. Unbalanced formation, strong right, and Lewis will pass. No pressure, has time, has a man off his hands and complete at the 45-yard line. Overthrown by Tremaine Lewis. And third and 11 coming up. Well, that time, Tom, they sent the linebackers. We watch it on the replay. Stephen Walker up the middle on the left side. We've got Michael Fuller coming for the corner. He's making Tremaine throw the ball a little bit quick. He did not have enough time to let the man get open a little bit deeper down the field, not near as much time as he had in the first quarter when he completed a, a couple of long passes. Still, there are some blue jerseys running unattended in that pair of secondary, and you don't want to give him too much time. Third and 11. Four down set for Paris. Here comes the pressure. Lewis under pressure. Just throws it away. Almost oh. intercepted. Darwin and Ferguson. Dropped. Darwin Ferguson had it in his hands. It was already celebrating and forgot one thing. He forgot to cradle it. 
The Look football drops out for Darwin Ferguson, but the Wildcats Silver Crush defense getting another big ovation from the far sideline. Rodney Wortham with the pressure makes Tremaine Lewis throw it before he wants to, and right off the right forearm of Darwin Ferguson and down to the ground, but a well-deserved round of applause for that Silver Crush offense. Fourth down and 11, and Paris is going to have three minutes and 40 seconds to work with with the wind at their back in this third quarter. The punt will come from the West Orange Stark 15. Good snap. Kick is a wall. It's blocked. It's blocked. Richard Jones it's got it. And Paris has it inside the 15-yard line of the 13. First down. We said it last week, Tom. Jones is so close, so close to blocking a punt. He was inches away from him last week. This time, he gets deeper pursuit than he has on any of the punts prior to this one today. Gets there, makes the block. I didn't even get to see who come up with the fumble, but I know it was wearing a white jersey. 14-yard line, first and 10 cats. Also, your punter was setting up short, awfully short. He set up about five yards shorter than your normal drop. He was only about 10 yards back. First and 10, Paris at the West Orange Stark 14. Cats with a golden opportunity. Wing left, pitch left. Running room, 10 at the 6 and out of bounds. Ronnie Wortham. Wortham turns the corner behind the lead, blocking again as we watch it on the replay. Key battle comes up, makes the kick out block. Ronnie Wortham turns the corner behind him and drove, driven out of bounds. It's a 7 yard line, a big 8 yard pickup, and that's what the Cats want to do on first down, get the big yardage. They mark it at the 6. Second down and 2, Paris. Wing left, the short side of the field. They will go back to the weak side, the five, the four. Touchdown. touchdown, key battle. Listen to the Paris crowd. Is anybody home in Paris, Texas today? They'll all be home tomorrow afternoon. Actually, while you're watching this game, you'll all be home. It is 16 to seven, Paris, 324 to go on the third. And Tom, Eddie made a great point while ago. All of these Paris points are unanswered. West Orange comes out with a 7-0 lead. Paris has scored touchdown, field goal, and now touchdown. And Brooks on to attempt the extra point. An important extra point. It's up. And he got it's it. good. A line drive. 324 to go on the third. Don't you dare go away. Paris 17, West Orange Stark 7. We are back in the third quarter. Let's watch the touchdown one more time as Key Battle carries it in from six yards out. Nice pitch, cuts inside, gets great blocking as it opens up against that West Orange Stark pursuit. What Paris is doing, Randy, is now beginning to take advantage of the West Orange Stark lateral speed. They're cutting back against the grain. Get them moving one way, go back the other way. It has paid off. Well, with two aggressive defenses like you've got with these two teams, Tom, Paris is, is just as bad at, or not bad at doing it, but they have a tendency to overrun the play, and West Orange Stark is now having a tendency to do that as well. On the touchdown play, you'll notice they had great lateral pursuit out time, outside, and just about the time they do that, Key Battle makes a 45-degree turn, turns straight up field, and runs right into the end zone. 3.24 to go in this third quarter. Paris 17, West Orange Stark 7, not over by any means. The kick taken at the 10 on a line drive. Lamb did not get this one quite as deep. To the 30-yard line and out. Good field position at the 33. So West Orange Stark will start in the best field position they've had here in the second half of play. It looked like Derek missed this one a little bit, Tom. He's, he's been kicking the ball extremely well. This one he only gets down to Julian Richards at the 10-yard line. And Julian brings the ball back out 32. West Orange Stark has a, a little bit better starting position, a field position to start this, this series of downs than they did the last. The pressure again on the Silver Crush defense. West Orange Stark, first and 10 at their 33. Four-man line for Paris. Motion in the backfield for West Orange Stark. For Maine Lewis, here's the pitch back and oh, the and Paris, Paris has got it again. It. And who is it? Darren Lane, 87. Darren Lane having an excellent afternoon and you've got to think that there's a little bit of gentleness going on in the West Orange Stark 
backfield now. The pitch was perfect. It hits right in the hands of Jamar Rhodes. Rhodes just could not handle it. Darren Lane coming from that right or tight a right in position comes through there, makes the recovery, and two back-to-back -back turnovers by West Orange Stark and Paris is in shape again. First and ten at the Stark 27-yard line. Wing left. Paris pitch at the 25. That is Henderson 20. Inside the 20 down near the first down at the 17-yard line. Paris's offense is dominating now. 17 to 7. Though. Paris leading West Orange Stark. There's Watch Henderson on the again. On the replay monitor, you see Dillard outside making the kick out block. Marcus kicking right in behind him. 10 carries, 53 yards, and one touchdown in this game. Over his 1,000 yards for the year. First time in three years for a Paris back. Wing left for the Wildcats. Double tight end set. They go weak side this time, inside to the 15 and down to the 13-yard line. Key battle, Key battle on, on the carry. Right side. Looked a lot like the touchdown play just moments ago. 17-7 Paris, 2.39 to play in the third quarter. When you get into the playoffs, the first two rounds, you may see some wide disparities between teams, but believe me, this is not chopped liver on the West Orange Stark sideline. These people are the defending Class 4A champions two years in a row. Turnover to the key. Wing to the right side for Paris. Second down and a long seven. They'll go that way. Looking inside, outside, and dropped at the line of scrimmage is Gary Young. And West Orange Stark now making the defensive stand of the game. I would think if Paris scores here, West Orange Stark is forced out of its game plan. Rick, Rick Darren, Darren. Yeah. again, we mentioned him all afternoon. He is the leader of that Mustang defense. The middle linebacker comes up to make the play, and uh, this is a big defensive down for the Mustangs because if Paris was to kick from here, they're looking at another 31 or 32-yard field goal. Maybe longer than that. Carrot. Harris really needs to get this first down. 129 and the 39 on the clock running. Dillard wants to He's throw. Got a man in the wants to throw. Open. Caught. First down. One. Touchdown. 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 Paris. That and is Dillon Lane appropriately, again. appropriately enough, the man that recovers the fumble defensively gets to score the touchdown offensively. And Tom, he was out there all alone in the left flat as we look at it on the replay monitor. Dillard floats it out to Darren Lane. A great catch has to turn around. It's right at his face mask. And then he just drives this guy right at the goal line and says, there's no way you're keeping me out of the end zone. It is it is incredible. You can't believe it. 23 to 7, Paris. Dillard to hold for Brooks. Don't adjust your sets, ladies and gentlemen. Snap is back. Kick is up. Kick is good. 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 It is 24 to 7, Paris. 17 24 unanswered points by the Wildcats. 131 to play in the third quarter. Third quarter at Kyle Field. College Station, Texas, the Paris Wildcats have taken advantage of every West Orange Stark turnover in this quarter. They have scored 17 points. It is 24 to 7 Paris. The touchdown play again, Darren Lane at the five, at the one, and says, no way. Give me the end zone, and he got it. Talk about turnovers, Tom. West Orange has the turnover deep in the second quarter when they're driving against Paris that kept them possibly out of the end zone because they were moving the ball at will in that second quarter. That was the only turnover that Paris came up with in the first half. The other two have turned into 14 points for Paris. And Cleburne turned the, or I want to say Cleburne again, but uh, Kerrville Tyvee turned the ball over four times against this West Orange Stark team last week. And you saw what the outcome of that ball game was. Derek Lamb will kick off. Ball squarely between the hash marks at his 40. This is a low squib kick taken at the 30-yard line. He's at the 35, at the, still on his feet at the 40, and down at the 45-yard line. So Paris opts to give up field position. They really, though, Randy, with that squib kick, and I don't know if that was deliberate or not, but uh, West Orange Stark played it much better than everybody else has against Paris the last three weeks. Mark Roberts was able to knock that ball down, Tom, and uh, right there at the 30-yard line, whereas the last couple of weeks, the ball has gone a little bit deeper back in around the 20-yard line. So this is definitely the best uh, field position for the Mustangs in this quarter or in this half. And the pressure right back on the Silver Crush defense. 24-7 Paris, 125 to go in the third for Maine Lewis wants to get his team back in this thing. 
Passing formation, fakes the draw, over the middle, wide open, overthrown. At the Paris 40-yard line, he had uh, Rodney Jolvet wide open. Rodney Jolivet was wide open, and Tremaine Lewis simply misfired on that one, threw it about five feet over his head. Second down and 10, West Orange start. Jolivet got some limited action in the second half against Kerrville as we watched the tape earlier in the week, and that's what they like to go to him out of the backfield. That swing pass out of the backfield was very effective last week. Uh, big yardage both times they completed those passes. 120, the clock stopped on the incompletion here in the third quarter. Single setback, and Kerrville, I mean, pardon me, West Orange Stark will throw a man open, caught and out of bounds at the Paris 47-yard line. That will be two yards short of the first down, third down and eight coming up for West Orange Stark. Eric West makes the reception, but he's a couple of uh, yards shy of first down yardage, and he does a good job of getting his feet back and inbounds. Actually, he's going to be... A little over, well, just about two yards shy. So a but third Harris, down situation. Harris giving him a big cushion that time, waiting for him to break it back up the sideline. Instead, he took the out pattern to the sideline, made the catch and went out of bounds. A big third down and two for the Silver Crush defense. They've withstood the pressure the last two times. We'll see if they can do it again. Split backs behind for Maine Lewis. West Orange start quickly to the line of scrimmage. Here's the pitch back. Looking outside has got the corner but didn't get the first down. He's out of bounds outside the Paris 46. He had to reach the 45. It will be fourth and a yard and a half to go. And let's see now if Dan Hook says it is time, gentlemen, to go on the fourth down play. Well, the pitch back to Joliet this time. He's got some good lead blockers out there. Again, it's Darren Lane and Roddy Wortham comes up to make the, the final hit that knocks him out of bounds. And uh, it looks like they are going to go for it on fourth and one, Tom. One eleven to go in the third quarter for West Orange Stark. A very yeah, big a offensive out. play. And now West Orange Stark does want a timeout. They'll talk about it. With 111 to play, 24 to 7, Paris, a lead built on the strength of West Orange Stark turnovers and that pounding, pounding, pounding Paris running game. And then, of course, once you get them pounded to a certain point, they look for the run and you hit Darren Lane with a touchdown pass. Well, they did basically the same thing in the in the fourth drive of the series against Cleburne last week. They drove the ball against Cleburne just time after time after time after time. Then they dropped back and throw a seven-yard touchdown pass to Kenneth Ellis in the end zone, and it, there was nobody even close to him. Basically the same thing here. Darren Lane floats to the left flat. There's nobody even in the picture when he makes the catch, and he has one man to beat to get into the end zone. Incidentally, uh, everybody, the uh, West Orange Stark is down to one timeout. That, could that, be is, very important that is their basically. second timeout, so they are down to one last timeout. Still has it is three. fourth and just a little over a yard for the Mustangs. Big down. A big down both defensively for Paris and for West Orange Stark, the defending Class 4A champions. Eye formation, now a power eye behind Tremaine Lewis. Lewis, they'll sweep, and he will have the first down. At the fourth ball, ball, and Paris has it. got it at the 40, 37-yard line. Another West Orange start turnover. Let's see if we've got it on the replay and see how well he was hit. Big defensive here hit here. Here we go. I think that is Brown. It is. It is. He has got the first down there. And then he is popped and loses the football from behind as it's knocked out. By, Rodney uh, Kendricks, Kendricks will come up with a recovery, and it was Michael Johnson that makes the hit from behind. Roddy Wortham in your picture there on the ground is in front, and another big turnover for West Orange Stark. Fourth turnover of the quarter for West Orange Stark. And Paris, first and 10 at their own 37-yard line, wing to the left. Diller, here's the pitch inside the cutback to Gary Young over the 40, down at the 41, a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. And, Tom, that's exactly what Paris wants to do. They want to keep the ball on the ground and eat up as much of that precious time clock as they can. They have got the 17 points in this quarter, coming out tied at 7-7 as we see Gary Young on the replay picking up four yards, but uh, more importantly, dwindling that clock down inside 40 seconds. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Wildcats with a wing set to the left side. Double tied in. They'll sweep to the weak side. Cut it back inside at the 45. At the, oh, close to the 50 and a first down. Carlos and Bass. Carlos Bass almost had that one gone for the distance. He was tripped up around the 45. Had that not happened, Bass was on his way. And we can see the look of concern right now on the West Orange Stark sideline. The, Mustang cheerleaders are just a little unhappy, and I can understand why. Our spotter up here with us for West Side Stark is not really pleased either. 
Paris will have the ball. That is a first down. First and 10 at the 49. And the clock is running, and Paris will not get another play off. We are coming to the end of the third quarter at Kyle Field in College Station. Don't blink your eyes and think that you're seeing things. This is the way it is after three quarters. Paris is one quarter away from a state championship. The Wildcats 24. Oh, check that. We've got a delay of game coming up, don't we? Well, they're, they're motioning something against West Orange. No, he no, didn't make, make he the motion. against Paris. Yes. And Paris now will have to run a play, so let's hold everything in the truck because on a penalty, the clock, the, uh, clock stops, and Paris now will have to run a play, and it'll be first and 15 from their own 44-yard line when they mark it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't go get anything out of the refrigerator or uh, any other errands you might have to run. We've got one more play to run here in the third quarter. Uh, a lot like last week, Randy, when we told people that if you'd have told us this score at this time by this much, uh, there were some who might have thought West Orange Stark would have had the 24 and Paris the 7. Exactly. But you flip it the other way and you tell it this much at this time, you say, no way. That is. And after the first half, you said, no way. It might... I, I, again, I think that when we said the Cleburne game last week, even Alan Wilson said 14-7, 14-10 and go home. I'd have taken that. 14-7, 14-10, go home here. He'd have taken that. Right now, he is up 24-7. to And it's all and, uh, he has to He has to hold on now in the fourth quarter against what will be, I would guess, a Kyle Field full of footballs being thrown down uh, from... Uh, North to south. It's going to be an Air Lewis. Play. Air Lewis show, no doubt about it. Fellas, I don't see the fat lady warming up, so let's don't get into that. There, is no, there is no fat lady singing. We're talking She's about a West Orange. Yet. I don't think they have one in a &M. <laughs> We're talking about a West Orange Stark team that has not seen the losing side of the ledger to a Class 4A team in over two years. Now then. And now they say the clock has run out. Following the penalty, Paris will come back to first and 15 in the fourth quarter. We are at the end of three, and believe me, this is what you are seeing. Paris 24, West Orange Stark 7. Back to play in the fourth quarter. Paris first and 15 from their 44. Looking for running room and finding none is Carlos Bass. He's down at the 43-yard line. We'll bring up second down and 16. We were discussing during the break, and we find it a little bit unusual. He's Roddy Wortham. Oh, excuse me, Carlos Roddy Bass. Wortham. Yeah, all right. Well, twos and threes look really <laughs> the same. You don't understand how high we are unless you've been to Kyle Field. If you have, you bring your nosebleed kit when you come to the press box because we are way up high. All right, we'll get back to what we were talking about, the penalty right before the end of the quarter in just a moment. Split backs behind Dillard on second down and 16. Dillard wanted to pitch. Bumble, bumble. 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 Paris, no, they've got it. West Orange start. Paris turns it over at the 43-yard line. Dillard was caught between pitch, pass, or run, and that cost him the football. This game is not over by any means. Dillard never had control of the ball, Tom. When it came from the center, he was juggling it. He tried to pitch back. There was somebody hanging on his shirt, and it took him to the ground, and he couldn't crawl over to the ball, and West Orange comes up with a big turnover. The pressure is on the Silver Crush now. 42-and-a-half yard line. West Orange Stark with the football following the Paris turnover. 24-7 Paris leads with 11.20 to go in the football game. Let's see if Flip Paris backs defense. behind for Maine Lewis. Five-man set. Lewis rolls, wants to pitch, does. And there's flag a penalty flag down. down at the 43, and the runner is down at the 43 for perhaps no gain. That looks like Brown on the carry and was. Key procedure. battle was over there. Procedure, it looks like it's going to be procedure right side. There was somebody moving just before prior to snap. We look at it at the right end. I think it's going to be called for procedure. Paris probably will turn this down and give them a second and 10 instead of a first and 15, although it will move it back another five yards and put them a little bit farther away. Well, you're talking to Key Battle right now, the defensive captain. Battle says... No, thank you. No thanks. We'll, let, we'll, we'll uh, make it second down and a short, uh, a short 10 or a long 9. The ball is squarely on the Paris 42. A gain of a half yard for Brown. Clock runs with 11-10 to go. This could be yeah, a very good defensive series for Paris. A very important one. This, I would think, is a very important series for Paris. Unbalanced line, strong to the left side for a West Orange start. Lewis, straight back. No pressure. Over the middle. Caught. Dropped. 
And that was six. I promise you that was six. He had three yards on the Paris secondary and dropped the football. And how many times has Julian Richards touched the ball and had it dropped? Once. One for a touchdown. This one for another as a perfect strike from Tremaine Lewis hits him right in the hands in stride, and there's no way Darwin Ferguson could have caught him from behind because he was gone if he had held on to the ball. That was six, and it's not. West Orange start, third and nine from the Paris 42-yard line. Lewis straight back. No pressure. Has a man Almost tipped and out of, uh, out of bounds. That was for Eric West, and there was double coverage that time. Roddy Wortham with the coverage. Let's check third quarter statistics. We've lost our monitors, gentlemen. We can't see anything. Thank you. Now do we have the third quarter statistics by any chance? We'll get to them when we can. It is coming up on fourth down. There we go. 11 first downs for Paris, 7 for the Mustangs. A big difference now on the ground. 180 yards rushing for Paris. And all of that leading to that touchdown. There's more yards passing than that because uh, there was a 16-yard uh, completion for a pass and touchdown for Paris to Darren Lane. So we'll check our stats and get back to you on that. Fourth down. Tremaine Lewis wants to throw. Has no plenty of time. Man Got there. It. Caught first down at the Paris 30. The, well, Wild, the Wildcats that time elected to go with a four-man rush and cover. Unfortunately, they didn't get him quite soon enough on the coverage as he's down at the 30-yard line, first and 10, West Orange start. Watching again, Terrence Brown coming out of the backfield up to make the play was Darwin Ferguson, but Brown was sniffing out that first, yard, first down marker and was just a yard inside of it to get to the 31 for the first down yardage. First and 10, West Orange start at the Paris 31. Ball on this, the near side hash mark. Lewis, draw oh. play. Has running room. Brown at the 30. Brown at the 25. Still on his feet. Cuts back. Still on his feet. What a great run. 10. He will Touchdown. score a touchdown. A tremendous run by Terrence Brown. And that gets them close to being right back in this thing. West Orange Stark has made it 24-13. And Terrence Brown, this is a clinic. Watch it on the replay. This is what he's done all year. This is what he's known for, Tom. He breaks a tackle there, stutter steps, breaks another tackle there, another tackle there, and then there's no way they're going to get to him here. He makes one cut back against, breaks a tackle on on uh, Johnson, gets some good downfield blocking. Six, seven people in the, in the screen there getting downfield blocking, and that's what springs him into the end zone. 24-13, extra point is no okay. good. Oh, my. He misses it wide to the right. It is 24-13, Paris, and how big is that? How big is that? Suddenly, it is still three scores to win. Or actually, two, two touchdowns. Two, two, touchdowns, two touchdowns, touchdowns to win. To win. Let's watch the touchdown one more time. You won't see a better run by a high school running back in Texas than this one by Brown. Delayed. Hit at the line of scrimmage right there. Gets away. Limp legs his way through the secondary there. Now watch this. One tackle missed there. Watch Roddy Wortham comes up. Comes back. Can't get quite to him there. And he gets into the end zone. A great run by Terrence Brown. So and that is the longest run of the day by anybody in a West Orange Stark uniform. 31 yards on the on the touchdown, 14 carries for 89 yards for Terrence Brown this afternoon, and that is a mediocre day for Brown. 10-21 to play. We are not out of the woods by any means. West Orange Stark showing the character of a state champion has forced the turnover and taken it in for the touchdown. Kyle Field at College Station, home of the Texas A&M Aggies. And for the Paris Wildcats, hopefully a win here to go with two at Texas Stadium. Home of the 12th man. I'm just reading this. <laughs> That's only because ask, it's in large ask print. Him if he knows yes. what, ask him if he knows what it is, though. <laughs> he's, yes, a, he's, he's, from, he's from Oklahoma. What would he know about Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, good. Know exactly what it is. Here we go. The kickoff high and coming down short. Taken by Johnson at the 13. Johnson looking for a seam to the 20 and out to the 28-yard line. Paris will have it first and 10. For the Wildcats now, Randy, it is important to get first downs and keep the clock running. So ideally, Alan Wilson would like to keep this on the ground, chew up the time, and maybe run three, four, five minutes off the clock. But, Tom, as soon as you say that, Alan Wilson is the type of coach to come out and do just exactly the opposite of what you'd think he would do. I mean, it would not surprise me at all for him to throw the ball. Yes, I think that's what they probably should do. 
but will they? The wing is set to the right side and inside the tight end, and they will run that way. A seam for key battle momentarily, and then battle is down at the 31 after a gain of about three. Let's call it second down and seven. Dillard throwing the lead block that time. I picked up a single-digit number. I think it was Thomas James. Uh, De uh, Demeron Judge was the man in on the tackle, number okay. nine. Eights, nines, and sixes, single digits on those blue jerseys look about the same. But Dillard, Dillard threw a, a block in his direction, but James did a good job of fighting it off and, and making the play. A pickup of about two for Paris. Second down and seven. The Cats are moving into the north breeze here at Kyle Field. Unbalanced line, strong right. They'll sweep that way. Battle again, 35-36, close to the first down. It will be about two yards short. The catch coming up third and two, and the clock now running under nine and a half minutes to play. Good kick out block that time as we watch it on the replay. Diller does get the man this time, and Battle just kind of glides right through the inside there. Picks up about, uh, oh, five yards on the carry. Actually, they're going to spot it back quite a ways, and it looks like Key Battle is down on the ground, and they're looking at that leg again, Tom. Battle is injured on the play. There is an injury timeout on the field. They spot his progress, his knee down at the 35. The Cats will have third and uh, a long three or a short four, depending on how you'd like to measure it. 9-18 to go in the fourth quarter. 24-13, Cats on top of West Orange Stark. Keep going. I know it's a surprise, but it's not over yet, and that's one thing the Paris Wildcat fans have to keep in mind. It is not over yet. And the Mustangs, an explosive team. Let's watch battle one more time, see if we can pick up the injury. It may be tough. There were a lot of bodies flying around in there. But battle see he makes his at cut the right 35 there, like. right there, yeah. And didn't look like he really got hit. Might have hurt it when he fell onto the turf. So, Paris third and a long three. And Dillard rolls and wants to throw for it. Has a man there. Is caught first Darren down Lane. on the 40-yard line. Darren Lane again, who has done it all on defense and is now making his presence felt on offense. How big is that first down? Very big, Tom, because Paris keeps possession of the ball with 9.04 left to play. They've got the 11-point lead right now. We watch the play again. Dillard, a perfect pass, throws over two defenders right to the gut of Darren Lane. Darren steps up, a big hit defensively for the Mustangs, but unfortunately for them, it was after the first down yardage had been reached. Paris back in that wing T set, double tight end, wing to the right, they'll run that way. Looking inside, there's the seam for a moment, out to the 44, a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven for the Wildcats, trying to run the clock and doing a pretty good job of it now at 8.40 and running, and it'll be under 8.5 by the time they get this play called. Well, you go back to the, the first down play, too. We were talking about Alan Wilson just driving the ball at you, driving the ball at you, driving the ball at you, and just about the time you think you've got him figured out, he comes out and floats a pass over there. Basically the same play that they made the touchdown on to Darren Lane. Wide receiver to the right side now for Paris. Unbalanced line, strong right, and they will go that way. Looking for the seam and trying to get outside. Does 45 run ball. And Paris, Paris got it. I believe Paris got it. They Paris did it at the 45-yard line. Boyd Milby. Boyd Milby happened to be in the right place at the right time as Rodney Kendricks on the carry. Coughs it up. We watch it on the replay. Kendrick struggling for the extra yardage here. Coughs it forward, and if it weren't for the fact that Paris blocked so well downfield, there were nothing but blue jerseys there. He's hit as he tries to make his spin move, and the ball just pops way out. If you watch and downfield, there's Boyd Milby right there falling on it. Milby sees the ball just laying on the turf, and he dives right down for it. A big break for the Wildcats. First down at the 45 of the Mustangs. Wing T, strong left, they'll go that way. Cut it back inside, Gary Young at the 40, down at the 39-yard line, gain of six, second down and four. Raiding and the, the Wildcats, whom fortune has smiled upon here in the second half, and you have to admit, folks, that there are some good bounces happening for Paris. And no it's doubt. like Alan Wilson says, against a good football team, you've got to do your job, and a little good luck thrown in does not hurt a thing. And right no now, doubt. Paris has been the recipient of some very fortunate bounces of the football here in the third and fourth quarters. 7.25 to go in this game. The clock running. Paris second down and four at the West Orange Stark 39-yard line. Wing left. They'll go back to the right. Up the middle, close for the first down. This time it's Richard Jones on the deep pitch, Tom. And now you get into a point of situation where you've got Brown and Rhodes on the other side. That's basically what you've got for halfbacks 
on that side of the ball. But you come on the other side of the ball, we saw Kendricks on the last play, we've seen Wortham, we've seen Henderson. There's so many deep for 11 backs, I think it is, for Paris. Well, the stat guy's running out of room. He's got uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people carrying the football so far in the game for Paris. Wing right, third and less than a yard. Right up the middle. First they down, Paris. Roddy, Roddy Wortham. Wortham at the 33-yard line. And the clock will continue. Well, it'll stop on the first down while they reset the chain. 6.33 to go. I guarantee you the Paris folks that are here are going to party all the way home tonight if this is the way it ends up. If they go home tonight. If they go home. Well, we're going home tonight, and we're going to, if this is the way it ends up, it's going to be a short trip back to Paris because we'll be flying. I don't care what the wheels say on the pavement. We're watching the fans across the field there, and I believe they're they all standing. They still haven't sat down. They have been on their feet all game long. Having a wonderful time. Pitch back, Gary Young, 30-yard line in the fr in the open and got uh, close to seven yards inside the 30 and down at the 27-yard line. Gary Young cutting back against that aggressive West Orange Stark pursuit. Let's watch it again. And we've talked about this here in the second half. They're beginning to take advantage now, the fact that West Orange Stark flows to the ball, flows to the motion of the play, and Gary Young cuts it back for seven. Good downfield blocking that time, Tom, as you looked at the picture on the replay. Five or six lead blockers out there for Young, kicking it out. Young cuts it back up and for seven-yard pickup. The fumble recovery by Milby really has kept this one going. 5.41 to play in the game will go wide. The pursuit coming. Watch it's him. not there. 25-20 and down at the 16-yard line in Paris. Another first down. Marcus Henderson turns the corner, gets outside, gets the lead blocking. That time, if we look on the monitors here, the replay, they had the deep pursuit right there a back coming up and Henderson just changes gears right here enough to get it around the 20 yard line and down to the 16 first and 10 Paris 534 to play in the fourth quarter you're not excited are you not a bit your heart's not pounding is it no, no. I don't think so everybody's calm cool and collected up here where are we <laughs> Wing to the left side, Paris first and 10 at the 16. They'll go weak side, that is Richard Jones, 15, 14, 13 yard line. Jones gets three when he should have only gotten one. And the Wildcat running attack beginning to pile up some impressive yardage against a West Orange Stark defense that has prided itself on not allowing anybody to run on them. But you go back to something else, Tom, that's happened to the defenses the last three ball games. They have spent an awful lot of time on that field because the two, turn, three turnovers in this quarter that Paris scored on, Paris took a lot of time up, and West Orange Stark did not eat that much time off the clock on their touchdown drive. Under five minutes to play, Gary Young is back into the game for Paris, replacing Wortham. He does not. It's a fake pitch. Giller looks, wants to throw, and now does. And it's it's a touchdown. touchdown! That may have closed it out. I'm going to open Kenneth this Ellis. Ellis is right there. Kenneth Ellis, who scored the first touchdown against Cleveland last week on a very similar play, Randy, going to the corner. Watch it on the monitor. Dillard fakes the handoff, gets a great block there from Gary Young, enough to let him get around the corner. Dillard waits, waits, waits for Ellis to get open. He is there right in the end zone. The closest man is five yards away from him, and Kenneth just floated in behind him. Everybody from, from West Orange Stark side thought that Dillard was going to turn up field and run, and the linebacker came up or the corner came up when he did Ellis wide open in the end zone Cliff Brooks snap is back kick is up he hammers it through Good. it is 31 13 Paris 448 to go in the game Four forty-eight to play Kyle Field College Station on the campus of Texas A&M and the Paris Wildcats Look down there, folks, at those kids in the silver, blue, and white. You're looking at the next state class 4A football champions. Well, I wouldn't quite say that yet, Tom, but I'm opening this door. I hear someone tuning up. Why don't you go out and check on them, Ed? We'll call you when it's over. Okay. All right. <laughs> Derek Lamb to kick off. The Wildcats silver crush defense. And the West Orange Dark fans beginning to head to the exits. Lamb will kick it against the wind, and he'll squib it again. That time gets a big bounce, but it's picked up at the 30, and still on his feet and knocked down at the 37-yard line. Where the Wildcat defense will take over. Paris fans here will go absolutely bonkers when this one goes over. Kevin Richard on the carry. 
31-13. I didn't think anybody would score 31 points on West. Nobody has scored 31 points on West Orange Stark. The most they've allowed was the 22 that Tom Ball scored on them in the semifinals, and the Mustangs won that one 24-22. Nobody all year long has scored over 22 points on West Orange Stark, and Paris has put 31 on the board today. Tremaine Lewis will obviously be throwing here. Wildcats, here comes a pressure. He's got it off, caught, and down at the 48-yard line for a first down. And that is Julian, um, we'll get it, Julian Richard on the catch, and he finally caught that one. And fellas in the truck, if you can, we have lost uh, Randy Nation's microphone up here. And until we get him back, you all are stuck with me. So Tom, we got a flag on the field. <laughs> and there is a penalty flag on the play, and there's a Procedure. motion penalty against West Orange Stark. And the Mustangs, here in the second half, have not really been able to do anything right. Julian Richards that time comes out the right side and Michael Johnson covers him like a blanket. Richards had enough for the first down, but the procedure moves him back to the 32 and more importantly eats up the clock. 4.25 to play in this game. Paris 31, West Orange Stark 13. The Wildcats dream alive. There's a pressure. Passes downfield and off the hands of, of uh, Julian Richard. And to be quite honest, the defensive back Roddy Wortham didn't even see the pass. Ran right by it. Richard had a chance to make the catch and uh, it fell off his uh, fell off his hands let's watch it again on the replay Tom it hits him in the back it, it was it was fuller downfield with him and hit, fuller was right, right there and hit him right in the back so Richard tried me. to cut inside of Fuller to make the catch, but it it was just a little bit underthrown. It hits Fuller in the back. If he'd have turned around, there was no way he could get from catching it. Is that what you say right between the numbers, though, in the back? West Orange Stark's quest for a third consecutive state championship is beginning to fade here at Kyle Field. Downfield, overthrown, incomplete. Lewis was feeling some pressure. It hadn't gotten there yet. He had a man breaking open, but threw it a good 10 yards over his head. And it will bring up third down and 15 to go, and the dream begins to fade even more for West Orange Stark. Tom, you see the crowd leaving, uh, at least a representation of the crowd from uh, Orange Stark in the, on the Paris side. I, I think, they may not, they I may think, not leave till about 10 o'clock tonight. They may be. They may have a, a, you may call it a tailgate party in the stands when this one's over. They deserve it. 4-10, I think. We've lost a number on the <laughs> clock. 4-1 and something. Yeah, 4-1 and something when this one gets underway, but they're going to stop it. I we've got a stoppage of play it. right now, and to they've got a the problem clock. with the clock. Yeah, so we've got a clock problem. They're looking at that right now. I I think we've had shots at the West Orange Stark sideline. We haven't seen a whole lot of their fans, at least in this half. I haven't noticed them, but I haven't been looking. they fixed it now. It's 4-10. But... I would imagine there are some stunned expressions on the West Orange Stark side of the field. Well, right we now. saw it in the one clip we did get to see them. It was some stunned expressions. Tremaine Lewis, play action, setting the screen, incomplete, fourth down. Dropped. And there was coverage out there. One blocker and two white shirts, and that will not get your screen open at the 30-yard line. Rodney Jolivet out of the backfield, the intended receiver. And they're trying a little bit of everything right now, and there is just not much going right for the West Orange Stark Mustangs. The pressure was there, of course. The Mustangs were letting them come through to set up that screen, and Joe Lovett just could not keep his hands on the ball. And Paris Wildcat fans are rising to the occasion on the opposite side of the field, and justly so. 4.05 left to play. It's the Wildcats 31, the Mustangs 13. I wonder if everybody else has felt the need to adjust the ribbons yet. Oh, yes. Pull the ribbons out and put that state 4A up there in front of championship. They punted the ball away. It was fumbled by Michael Hightower, but Michael Johnson falls on it at the 36-yard line with 3.57 to go in the fourth quarter. Harris 31, West Orange Stark 13, and the inevitability of a state championship for Paris would, would appear to be here right now. No doubt about it. Inside four minutes, and, and Paris is just going to take this. Even if they don't get a first down, Tom, if they turn the ball back over probably inside the two-minute mark to to West Orange Stark, if they don't get a first down, if they do, they may not ever get the ball back. Paris sets up in the wing right side. James Dillard, pitch back, 35, penalty flags are down, and I think we've got motion on the Paris side of the ball, which will make it first and 15. 
That has been about the only way that West Orange Stark has been able to stop the clock here in the second half is on a penalty, either their own or a Paris penalty, and Paris hasn't had too many. They have played about as flawless a football game as you can play in a championship game. They have had, we've mentioned, the good fortune. They, exactly. They created and then recovered the turnovers and scored off the turnovers in the third quarter. And then Boyd Milby with the big fumble recovery that led to the final Paris touchdown. The pass again to Kenneth Ellis in the end zone and Milby's fumble recovery. The right place at the right time. Really, really put, may have uh, helped Paris put this one out of reach. It is first and 15, the motion penalty against the Wildcats. Swing to the left side as Dillard stays a quarterback. They'll go weak side now. Inside, 35, still on his feet and down at the 39-yard line. He got the five back on the penalty plus a couple of more. It'll be second down and eight for the Wildcats. And that was Marcus uh, Car Carlos, Bass. Carlos Bass on the carry. Bass takes a pitch. We look at it on the replay. Cuts back in beside the blocking. It was an off-tackle play that he cuts back and actually goes against the grain, Tom. Cuts back in and uh, picks up about three yards on what would have been a loss. They are yelling defense on the West Orange Stark sideline. They're going to need more than that. They'll need some offense. 3.16 to go in the game. Paris, second and eight. They'll pitch, run inside. Now outside, Henderson yeah. is loose. Bye-bye. 40. Oh, oh Carver behind. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Marcus Henderson, Ron Hasley saves the touchdown. Sure looks like he's gone, Tom, as we look at it on the replay monitor. Henderson gets the ball at the 40-yard th the line. Great block by James Dillard right there. Takes the only man out of the play. And Henderson looks like he's got nothing but about a 70-yard touchdown run. But Hensley gets one hand on him. Actually, it looks like he must have stepped out of bounds at about the 34-yard line as his foot was awful close to that sideline. Only defensive team we've seen in the playoffs that can catch Henderson when he's loose like that. Got him by the coattail. Wing right. They'll go that way. Carlos Bass hit, dropped after two, but the clock runs now under three minutes to play. And I am losing my voice. I admit to that. It's appropriate time. Though. Yeah, why not? <laughs> the score 31 to 13 in favor of Paris. You are welcome to lose your voice, Tom Allen. Thank you. <laughs> just incredible. I just, uh, we've said it for three weeks running. It's not supposed to be this way. It's always been a struggle for Paris. It has been this year with opening losses in their first three games and then to come back and do this. Just incredible. Right side. Looks like key battle. It is. He's got the 25. He's got the first down at the 18-yard line. Key battle, battle back in. That's great sign. You don't want to see anybody get injured, even if it is the last game of the year for these folks. And James Dillard again blocking downfield for Paris. And that is one thing that we have noticed in the games we have done. Great downfield blocking for the Wildcats. You see Kenneth Ellis is way downfield there also getting some blocking in. And you want to see some great numbers, Tom. That it hasn't been pulled out yet. Come ahead, roll that, roll that over there. Yeah, 15 carries, 103 yards for Marcus Henderson. Another 100-yard-plus game. 2:24 to play in this one. Pitch back, battle again. 20-yard line, struggles inside the 20, down to about the 17. Gain of three, second down and seven. Key battle, the workhorse in the uh, in the backfield for the Wildcats. He he takes the punishment and he dishes it out too. Close it in on two minutes left. If the city of Paris doesn't totally come out and greet this team when they come home, there is something wrong. These kids have done an incredible job this year. The only game they were really favored in was the Cleburne game. That was last week in the semifinal. We've got a wing to the left side now and a pitch that way. Looking inside, looking outside at the 15, and Gary Young is down around the 14-yard line. It'll be third and four for Paris, and the clock will be under... A minute and a half to go. We are at a minute 33 and counting right now. A minute 33, and the Wildcats are the state class 4A football champions in the state of Texas for 1988. And I'm looking over the other sidelines, Tom. There is not a person in that Wildcat fan stands that's sitting. I don't care what age they are. They're all standing up, and they're all cheering for this Wildcat Silver Crush offense and defense. West defense. Orange Stark scored first. Paris had 24 unanswered points to take the lead. There will not be a first down. Johnny Robinson dropped at the line of scrimmage. will bring up fourth down, but the Cats will run one more play. 54 seconds, and hopefully nobody stops this at 10 because we're going to let you listen to the count and then watch the Paris fans mob this field. 
They're already starting over the sidelines. They're taking over the cheerleading chores on the sidelines. The Wildcat fans are coming down. The Blazettes are trying to get down through here. Clock running with 30 seconds to play. As you deserve it. They have done an incredible job. The fans back on the track, under 20 seconds to play. Dillard, pitch back, no first down. Clock will stop on the change of possession now with 14 seconds to go in the game. And West Orange Stark gets it at their own 15-yard line. The dream for three consecutive state championships is over. West Orange Stark will not join that rather elite group of three high schools in Texas that have won three consecutive state titles. And the Paris Wildcats will start. And the Paris Wildcats may start a string. They have played a magnificent football game today. They went down early, 7-0 on a turnover in the first quarter. Fought back on a 53-yard drive in the second to tie it. Then scored 17 straight points off West Orange Stark turnovers in the third. The Mustangs came back to narrow it to 24-14, and the Cats put it away on the touchdown pass from Dillard to Ellis. 31-13 right now. And 14 seconds to play. Tremaine Lewis back to pass. Going deep. No, knocked down, and it should have been intercepted. Lonnie Kendricks just batted the ball away, and it, he had to bat it away to keep from catching it, Tom, because it hit him right in the face mask. 31-13, <laughs> Paris, nine seconds to go. Kendricks looks like he was swatting and flies. Get that thing away from me. I don't want that football. You may not get to hear a complete countdown, but what you will see are better than 3,000 fans, I would think, from Paris. Much, much better, absolutely yeah. bonkers in the middle of Kyle Field. You're going to get a chance to see him in just a few seconds. Three-man line for Paris. Well, make it four. Tremaine Lewis back to pass. Down the sideline. Caught, Run, dropped, dropped, incomplete. That'll stop the clock with three seconds. They'll run it one more time. And the Cats are the 1988 State, state Class 4A high school football champions. And well-deservingly so, Tom. They have been underdogs in four of the last five ball games, as you mentioned. Cleburne is the only game that the Cats were going into favored, and they have fought back some tremendous odds. The turnover bug in the early part of the season coming on those three back-to-back -back losses looked like it was going to be a long season for the Cats. Last they play of the game coming up. Tremaine Lewis under quarterback. At the quarterback, rather. Straight, straight back to pass. Caught, drop, it's Here over. Here comes the crowd. Listen to him, ladies and gentlemen. The dream has ended for West Orange Stark. And the dream continues for the Paris Wildcats. I don't think we can say enough about the job that head coach Alan Wilson, assistants Billy Blurton, David Clapp, Robert Qualls, Steve Coker, people like that have done. Don't forget this, the coaches in the middle schools and the uh, JV and freshman coaches, Bruce Miles, Benton Rainey, Larry Stowers, Ronald Weiss, Herbert Preston. Exactly, Tom, because that's where it starts. Alan Wilson has implemented the Wildcat offense in the middle schools. So by the time these kids get to high school and play freshman ball, they know the Paris Wildcat offense by heart. Our final score from Kyle Field and College Station. The 1988 Paris Wildcats 31, the West Orange Stark Mustangs 13. The celebration continues between the 20 and the 50 at Kyle Field and College Station where the Paris Wildcats celebrate their first ever state football championship. There may have been teams with more talent at Paris. There may have been teams with more weight at Paris. But I don't think there has been a team with more heart at Paris than the 1988 edition of the Paris Wildcats. No doubt about it, Tom. We went to the press, uh, to the uh, pep rally we had Thursday afternoon at 5.30 at Wildcat Field or at the parking lot at Paris High School. Alan Wilson summed it up. He says, how do you picture us as a state playoff team? See, we're too small, we're too slow, 
but we got big hearts. And that's what's got them here this year. The key quarter was the third with four fumbles by West Orange Stark that Paris turned into 17 third quarter points. And at that point, we're up 24 to seven. West Orange Stark came back midway through the fourth to make it 24 13. But then there is the trophy. And Paris fans will have a chance to appreciate that more and more and more when it goes into the trophy case at Paris High School. Well, actually, Tom, really, Paris outscored the other team in the last three quarters. Actually, outscored all three teams, all the team in the last three quarters. Which should, the, win you, which should win you a ball game. Enjoy the celebration with us. As I don't think, I think you're right. They're pitching tents down there right now on <laughs> Kyle Field. There's going to be a full-blown party before this one's all over. Tom, do, Tom do you remember me telling you that the team that could win, the first team that could win two games in Texas Stadium this year would win a state championship? You remember me telling you that? Well, yeah, but I thought that you would have a little bit. Never mind. I don't want to discuss your personal habits on the air. But, uh, I thought you were about a half a bubble off. Tom. Maybe flushed with victory after the 40 nothing route of Cleburne, but... Paris has come back and showed they can play with the very best in the state. We've said it before, West Orange Stark came in with a great tradition. They had won consecutive championships in state class 4A. You can't take that away from them. They are a great football team, but today, the breaks, the bounces, and ultimately the game go Paris's way. This is Tom Allen for Randy Nation and Eddie Anderson thanking you for joining us for this historic broadcast. The first Class 4A state championship for Paris in football. In fact, the first football championship for Paris in any class. 1988, the final, Paris 31, West Orange Stark 13. So long from Kyle Field.